<laughs> Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the over the road trucker. This is Bob and Tom's program, twenty four seven. Lord Coretta is a fine young comedian. Uh, are you a health yeah. guy? You run. You look very slender. And uh, I'm not a, a big health guy, although I'm healthy. I just uh, had a complete physical, and uh, unfortunately, I'm at that age where you get the real intense physical. No, yeah. yeah you know, I hope I'm not sharing too much, but mm -mm. the doctor actually stuck a camera in my rectum. <laughs> It's the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, everyone. I'm Chick McGee, and this is my first song. <laughs> it's a song about something I'm very familiar with. My life as a ladies' man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> of that nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. I'm a sex machine. Stanky. Nasty stuff. That's right. I am bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd give that a right on, brother. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what you're saying. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm feeling it. I dance as good as I want. And frankly, I'm a little frightened. <laughs> Lay it on me, ladies. Give it up. Give it up for the Mac Daddy. <laughs> I can't get enough. Of that nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Oh, oh my goodness. Nasty stuff. This, this has never, this has never happened before. I, I'm, I, I apologize. Nasty stuff. Does anyone have a towel or a moist towelette? <laughs> Well, thanks for the bump and grind. I've got to bust a move. Peace out. Nasty stuff! Nasty stuff. Ah, yes. Hi, Bob. Hi, Late, Chick McGee. Oh, no, no, no. And, oh, what? Everything went fine? Oh, okay. Hey. I don't know. Did it? Yes. It's yep. the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Christy Lee, how the heck are you over there in the news Great, desk? Thank you. Get Josh. out of the desk and sit down. Well, you know what I mean, you son of a... Pat Godwin! Hey, John. Ten words in, he's screwing up. It's unbelievable. I swear. You don't give him a chance. It's called a sports like God. Desk. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nut. <laughs> we have standards on this show. We do? When did that start? Yes. Wow. Like four minutes ago. <laughs> Pat Godwin, good to see you. Jeff Oskey sitting in for Chick McGee, who had a very successful gallbladder removal. And did yeah. transplant. Oh, yeah, what well, they put in a, a, a monkey, place. monkey gallbladder. Oh, okay. Yeah, ah. Hope it. he doesn't get the monkey box. I hope oh. so, too. Yikes. Ace, how are you? My neck hurts. I, you got to be careful with what wow. you say, man. What'd you say? My what hurts? <laughs> My neck. Neck. Okay. Oh, oh, boy, I, I, I heard something. It doesn't matter what we heard. Uh, Willie, how are you? Right. My man. Good. I'm really good. I finally saw Top Gun. It is so fun. It's my new favorite movie. Isn't it fun? Oh, okay. It's a great movie. All right. And my, my there's neck. There's Tom's, if you didn't already know. <laughs> my neck hurts. All right. Wow. <laughs> Get over it. We'll move on. <laughs> what could you possibly mistake that for? Get over uh, it, everybody. Uh, <laughs> my, my, nope. my man, 50 grand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, words yeah. are funny, aren't they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's go right to the email, shall we? Here from the overnights. Let's see. This is from uh, 11 o'clock last evening. Mm -hmm. um, this is from Chick McGee. Uh, it says, uh, Chick, all went well. My gallbladder ended up being triple in size. Wow. The doctor told me it was clogged with stones and hadn't functioned properly in years. Whoa. Whoa. Then it says, see, use guys Monday. 
Oh, now, really? I assume Chick is still in the hospital. Is that correct? Uh, I would assume. I don't know. Is he having an overnight stay? He may have. Okay. Um, Wait, but, why is he not going to come in Friday? Why is he being so lazy? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Mil thanks, Milking Jeff. it. Yeah, he's milking it. The, the man can't... He, they already got rid of that thing. Just come into work, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing uh, after an anesthesia, you're not supposed to drive for... When you've been put under like that, isn't there like a window there of not oh, some, some driving? Yeah. Uh, I can drive him. I can drive around. Driving Mr. Chicky. That could be a fun okay. time, me and him hanging out. Go well, pick him I, up I, in the I, morning, yeah. It is true, Willie. I can't believe he's missing tomorrow after an operation. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he had some open mic he had to do. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> hey, you know what? My neck hurts. I'm, I'm going to make it four minutes of bad stage time at a time, my friend. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's see. Where was I? Oh, you're taking the day off tomorrow, John. That's right. And Monday. You're That's go, right. Go to visit your brothers. Uh, yeah. And yeah. you were talking off the air about getting your fishing license. Yeah. For the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. oh, What's that going to cost you? Oh, it was about 50 bucks. Okay. Is that good for the whole year? Yeah. Okay, all, any, all kinds of fishing? Yeah. From a dock, from a boat, anything you want to do? Yes, yeah. Okay. No, no, it's a fair question. Some of these oh, fishing deep licenses. Seas? That would be a different license, yeah. I don't think you have to deep sea worry about that. In Is that all rivers and lakes? No, there's. Uh, you have to get a special license for uh, a, a certain other, a, a certain river in Missouri. And if I want to go... I believe it's trout fishing. I'd have to get a separate license as oh, well. Oh, really? Sure. Yeah. yeah, we had a guy in here. Uh, he was in the uh, state of Washington, and he was he went and got a fishing license. He was a touring comedian. Got a, He was fishing off this bridge, and the, the DNR guy came up, and apparently he had purchased a license that was only good from, like, bridge A to bridge C, and he was at bridge D, and he had this he got this huge fine. Oh. So it's it can be very complicated. Yes. Uh, yeah. But, uh, Plan ahead. What if you accidentally catch a trout? Like, is there it's, no it's, chances of yeah, that happening? Yeah, it, it oh, won't okay. happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, Unless you'd have to release it and pretend, hope no one saw you. <laughs> yeah. Are they out there with telescopes? And I think it's sure. some kind of special trout. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've seen them. I've, you probably have too, Jeff, on the lake. They're, they've got their binoculars. Oh, they have binoculars. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you got pulled over for what? Uh, well, multiple times for, uh, well, I've always had my license since the first time, but the very first time I didn't have my license and, uh, got a $180 ticket, which I've yet to still catch even $72 worth of fish. <laughs> <laughs> so I am definitely on the low end. That's what yeah. a fish deficit, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but every year, yeah, they come over and visit me and check to make sure I have my, have my fish. <laughs> well, now what are you going to be fishing for? Bass. Okay. And in large what, mouth primary. In what lake? Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, the big right. one. And uh, who's going to be in the boat with you? Jeff, my older brother. I mean, how big is his boat? Big enough, you son of a bitch. I mean, is that line of questions? Can, 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 can all four? Can all no, four no, I, and I've told you this off the air. You didn't want to hear it. It's only my brother Jeff and I this week, this time. This isn't the big fishing trip. But your mom's going to be there. No, no, she's going to a concert with us tomorrow. Oh, so she's not going fishing? No. <laughs> Will she join you for a? I don't even want to go lunch. on this vacation now. <laughs> that's that's how that, that's what he does. He yeah. sucks the life out. He just yeah. rings every. I guess a fair question. Drop a pleasure out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jeff the one that has the new twins? No, that's John. Oh, okay. Now, Josh, he hasn't asked you about your shore lunch yet. No, that won't happen. You can no, do a shore lunch? No, those of fish not. and go uh, shore, make a nice fire. And... No. Nope. <laughs> Real quick, so the other day I was watching, uh, I believe it's Charlie Breener. Breener, uh, the gentleman, he joined us a few months ago. Uh, he oh. had gone lugine with the... Yeah, sure. uh, the Wisconsin guy, right? And he mentioned a shore lunch, and apparently they have shore lunch... Original recipe uh, fish bread. <laughs> so I ordered you some, Tom. Oh, so cool. now you can have a shore lunch anytime oh, you want oh, in the nice. privacy of your own so kitchen. That's, that's just the breading. The fish isn't in the box. No, the fish. <laughs> yeah, no, it's full of blue. <laughs> so, so you have to catch the fish. That's cool. So, uh, yeah, they. Uh, I had never even heard of a shore lunch. Apparently, it's a brand. It's so popular. Oh, be darn. Uh, uh, shore lunch is the thing. You know, the, the guide takes you into shore. They've got, oh, they've got the fat. They throw it in a nice cast iron skillet, heave it on the okay, fire. Then. I, see, the way I fish, the guy doesn't take oh, us anywhere. I was going to say, the guy. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. the guy. You, you, you must be just brother. fish. When you tell stories, you sound like <laughs> Nick <laughs> Adams. It's like Ernest Hemingway wrote your childhood. It is crazy. Does he bait your hook as well? <laughs> no. Marlon, take us to the water. Yes. <laughs> uh, 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 
Danny was about. What I, I thought we would do is since we're, ta- we're talking, this is our fishing hunk. Yeah. Uh, we'd uh, uh, feature a uh, a classic fishing song. Oh. This is a little something uh, from Haywood Banks. Yes. Here we go. Fish and worms, fish and worms. Everybody's wishing they had fish and worms. Find them in the garden, turn over a rock, slip them in your sandwich, put them in your sock. That's fish and worms, fish and worms. <laughs> well, my big sister, she don't like my fish and worms. Big ones, little ones, they scare her to death. She was making chocolate shake. I dropped a couple in the blender. <laughs> now she's sitting around with bated breath. <laughs> From eating fish and worms. Fish and worms. Everybody's wishing they had fish and worms. Do your English homework. Underline a word. Circle direct object. Intransitive verb with a fish and worm. <laughs> fish and worm. <laughs> Wrap them around a corkscrew. Twist Twist them in some twine. Take them to the health spa so they can unwind. That's fish and worm. Fish and worm. Fish and worm. Well, I like doing everything you can think about the fish and worms. Gushy, gushy, gushy ones. The ones that wiggle and squish. There's only one thing I don't like doing with fish and worms. And that is, of course, to catch fish. I hate them fish and worms. Fish and worms. Everybody's wishing they had fish and worms. Find them in the backyard, underneath some leaves. Make them little dresses. Just leap off the sleeves. That's fish and worms. 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 The genius of Haywood Banks and uh, the classic fish and worms. Uh, Josh going fishing with his, one of his brothers, not the whole family. Yeah, no, that'll be the big 4th of July. Mom will be unsure. Uh, and um, what, what kind of bait? Do you use? Uh, just regular lures. Okay. So I'll probably use uh, some spinner bait and oh, a little I top like a water nice and some crank bait. Yep. Okay. We, we want some pictures. Okay. Uh, okay. But very good. You got them. Uh, right now, I want to remind you of something very cool. Um, uh, we're talking about Raycon. These are the greatest, greatest earbuds, and they're half the price of the expensive ones. I want you to give these a shot. They're better than those little white ones that keep falling out of your ears. Raycons, uh, there's a whole bunch of different styles and uh, different colors, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm telling you what, they've got this uh, the eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life with Raycon earbuds. And also different kind of modes for whatever you're listening to so you can make it the, the appropriate, what can, what's the word I want, sonic architecture, if you will. <laughs> one for music, one for talk. For example, we have found that if you listen to this show on Raycon earbuds, 30% funnier. That's Ooh. right. That's right. Even during that last segment. So check out Raycon earbuds. It's easy to remember. You go to buyraycon.com slash Tom. That's a lot of three-letter words. Buyraycon.com slash Tom. And get 15% off your Raycon order. I uh, just got a new pair of Raycons myself. I got to tell you how much I like them. Also, very safe uh, if, uh, if you're uh, in the car and you want to make that phone call. And some places required by law. Buyraycon.com slash Tom. 15% off your Raycon earbuds. I'm telling you, they're half the price and they are twice as good. Buyraycon.com slash Tom. Coming up in sports. Any, who has the sports? I oh, I'm going to tell you whether Gosh, or not uh, there was basketball last night. The NBA Finals. Spoiler alert. There was. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Thanks, Ace. He was... I, I have an idea. I want to split the sports up between the four of you guys. Let's just, this yeah. is too complicated. All right. Uh, uh, complicating it's things uh, is my life. It's one story. <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, boy. Three, four. I call the nouns. I call the nouns. Josh, you get heard. Uh, wow. Coming up, Josh, sit down. We have... Velveeta news. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Chick, get back your ASAP. I think he's had it with you. Buddy, it's all coming my way oh, I'm really feeling good. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Good morning.
at Sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. And a good morning to you. My name is Mark Allison. You're listening to Bob and Tom, 24-7, Thursday, June 9th. On the way, our West Coast Mountain correspondent, Al Jackson, going to be Zooming his way in with a quiz for our own Tom Griswold. Also, comedian Brian Dunkelman will be catching up with Brian to find out about his brand new documentary on Amazon Prime Video. Dunkelman, it's going to be fun catching up with Brian. He's a great guy, and we'll find out what he's been up to. Also, Chick McGee doing well following a legal separation, well, actually medically, of his gallbladder. But again, doing well, and we expect him back uh, fully healthy there on Monday back at the sports desk. Jeff Oske sitting in for the Chickster today. And I believe Josh Arnold handling the sports uh, knowledge for you today. And you're welcome. Hope you're having a great morning. So glad you could be with us. It's going to be fun. Thanks for joining us here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News Update. The widow of Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins is making her first public statement since his death. As the band has announced two concerts in his memory, Allison Hawkins thanked bands for the outpouring of love after his death in March. Meanwhile, the Foo Fighters are planning to hold tribute concerts September 3rd in London and September 27th outside Los Angeles. The lineups will be announced later. Most of the audio history of the band Blondie has been sitting in guitarist Chris Stein's barn in Woodstock, New York for nearly two decades. They sorted through 100 reel-to-reel tapes, half a dozen cassettes and various stuff that included dressing room signs and an Andy Warhol print to create the upcoming Blondie Boxed Set Against the Odds, 1974 to 1982. 36 of the 124 tracks have never been released before. It will come out on August 26th. The Jennifer Lopez documentary Halftime kicked off the 21st Tribeca Festival yesterday, launching the annual New York event with an intimate behind-the-scenes portrait of the singer-actor filmed during the tumultuous year she turned 50, co-headlined the Super Bowl, and narrowly missed out as an Oscar nomination. A star-studded and musical premiere at the United Palace in Washington Heights served as an appropriate opener for the Tribeca Festival. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian John Campanera. Vince Mike- Scully is funny because he's one of these announcers that loves to read lips. Wait a minute. Here comes Tracy out of the dugout. He's in the umpire's face. It appears he wants to take the ump to Fuddruckers after the game. <laughs> you know what makes me laugh is Skip Carey, mm-hmm. Harry Son. He yeah. does the Atlanta Brave games. Sure. I listen to this guy when I can't sleep. Ah, hey, Chipper Jones takes one on the outside. Three and one on Chipper Jones. <laughs> Don't forget, all week long, we got the best of the Duke right here on TBS. <laughs> John Wayne right here on TBS. There's a long fly ball. Looks like that's out of here. <laughs> I love that. And you know, Harry's going, I can't believe that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Harry would get excited over the dumbest stuff. Hey! Check out the kid in the sombrero. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Chick McGee having his gallbladder removed this afternoon. And, Poor uh, fella. He's going to be fine. Uh, but uh, let's see. Gary has been kind enough to uh, write us. What does Chick McGee's gallbladder have in common with JFK Jr.'s flying lessons? <laughs> <laughs> Both completely useless. Oh. Okay. That, is, that, is, that is a listener. Boy, <laughs> thank you. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom 24-7. Not on air, online, all the time. Bob and Tom 24-7. Brigham All Broadcasting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. The oldest gold medalist was in 1912 when Oscar Swan took home first prize in a shooting event as a 64-year-old. Mm. And while a 64-year-old Olympian is rather amazing, there was almost an 87-year-old winner. 
at the first Olympic luge competition in Innsbruck, Austria, 1964. The fastest luge run was logged by an 87-year-old Austrian, Johann Liekensfinkter. <laughs> Johann amazed the crowd and the judges who nearly awarded him the gold medal oh. until it was learned that Liekensfinkter was not entered in the event or even on the team. It seems that Johann was a spectator who had slipped and accidentally slid down the track at a record pace. <laughs> Liekensfinkter left his mark in Olympic history as well as on the luge track itself. This has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Thanks for listening to Bob and Tom. Hey, it's the Bob and Tom show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Howdy, everybody. Pat Godwin in the performance room getting ready for a big day of music. Hey, Josh. Hey, I saw some uh, planning going on, some uh, instruments being no, brought no, it in. Was, it was an argument. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> uh, I said, hey, Pat, why don't you play something from your new album? And he goes, what album? You know, the one that we just released. Well, that we released, too. The one uh, and then he's like, I, I don't, I've, I've done every song in the album. Oh, okay. I was actually talking about a different incident, but your delusions of grandeur are astounding. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're not delusions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Back to you. Jeff Vasquez sitting in for one Chick McGee, who's healing up very nicely after gallbladder removal. Yes, Jeff, yes. good to see you. And Willie, and I couldn't help but notice your readers. Uh, actually, these are Chick's readers. Oh, okay, but they work well for you? Yeah. You look... You look oh, you, you look do. nice in those. It does. Well, yeah. well, let me see. It looks like you're playing a prank. It makes you look, it, it makes you look significantly less homeless because, <laughs> because a homeless guy wouldn't have spectacles that are that You look nice. like you're in your shed building fly fishing equipment. Like, that, I, that's my dream. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's fly. It looks a little more like pipe bombs to me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got that Kaczynski look. What's he, what's he building in there? <laughs> yeah, it's that Ted Kaczynski. My Maybe manifest. So it's you nearly know what? Complete. I've been watching that David Letterman series. David Letterman has a beard like yours. Tell these guys to just. Yeah, well, David Letterman's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. How do you know? Jeff might be. You don't know. I, it I'm looks good. I'm not. <laughs> uh, no one, no one that has hundreds of millions of dollars meets me here in the morning before 5 a.m. to work. <laughs> hey, Scouse, me at the board. How's your neck, pal? It hurts. It hurts. Okay. okay yeah. What'd you yeah. do? I don't know. I, I was going up to bed and suddenly mm -hmm. it hurt. And, and normally it's when you're in. In bed. I wonder what Sleep happened. Wrong. I can't imagine somebody tried to strangle you. <laughs> Willie Griswold. Yeah, Chick couldn't. So he, he's normally Chick would be the first suspect in this game of Clue. <laughs> By the way, did you just hear, Jeff, you are like a loyal, you're the nicest guy. My dad just used you coming into work early to help him as an insult towards you. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I felt it. I was just saying it, it, it would be admirable if... if Maybe there are people who have millions of dollars in the bank that don't have to work to get up and work. Good for them. Oh, I, oh, I know they do. Warren yeah. Buffett. Elon Musk is one of those guys. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Jeff Oske. Jeff Oske. <laughs> well, once again, if you've I've never seen Mr. Oske, um, he has a, a, an extremely bushy, thick, long beard. David Letterman uh, also. Uh, but... Yes. Um, and those clear spectacles. Didn't you try to wear those once? Didn't you say you tried those on? It didn't work for me. It didn't work for him much, I don't think. You don't think? Oh, nah, I think he looks great. I don't uh, really care for Now, if you want to see Jeff live and in person, uh, uh, Jeff's doing a, a number of gigs, actually. Yeah. Including a special charity gig with pretty much all of us. Christy will be out of town, but the rest of us will be around. Sorry. Details are on the Bob and Tom website. We're going to raise some money, send some kids to summer camp, which this has been a pretty awful summer for news and gas prices and all kinds of horrible things are going on. But summer camp is the greatest. And sending some kids who ordinarily wouldn't be able to go to go to camp is, I think, a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing it. Details are on our website. It's uh, going to be a show on Friday, June 17th. Now, um... Let's see, I'm looking at this Saturday, June 18th, at the Pivot Brewing Company, a free show in Lexington, Kentucky, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Me and Willie. It'll be All made right. even more handsome by the presence of Willie and Jeff Oskey and David Brooks. That'll be fun. How about yeah. that? Come hang out. Free show. You can reserve tickets in my Instagram bio. Come They're on. They're going quick. 
Yeah, drink a cider with the fellas. Come on, ladies. Get Beer and laughs doesn't get better than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a good good time. Now, Willie's a single guy. Now, now Jeff, uh, you're taken. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> or she's being taken. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this no. Mr. David Brooks a single guy? David is a single guy. He is. He loves the ladies, man. Yeah, he ladies, loves the ladies. Ladies. Ace, I can't help but notice you can't turn your head. Are you okay? That was a short stop. I couldn't go to my left. <laughs> 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 Poor guy. Do you want Wait, my... so you were just walking to your bedroom. Did you take some ibuprofen? No. no. All right, we'll give you some. There's of that. nothing quite like a, a crick in your neck. I know. Why is it called a crick? I have never understood that. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Is that, that, is that spelled C R I C K? I've never seen it in right. Oh. Yeah, I don't know either. I um, I, I will say this. Um, I had to years ago. I had to go through physical therapy. Uh, for a long time, and, and and every day, in fact, and and so you'd you'd start to see a lot of people in, in, that are doing, you're kind of making the rounds of the machines and all the mm -hmm. physical therapists, real nice people, but you can't say to the physical therapy guy, "Hey, what's this guy in for?" No, because they have hip <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're so, to this guy. Yeah. What's he in? Here? Yeah, so I, that's where I would walk over to someone, and go, "Hey, you know, what are you doing? What 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 did you do?" And because you're all, and it's an ace, you <laughs> like this. Did anybody it's, say it's none of your damn business? Yeah, and no. also it's physical therapy, <laughs> not prison. Why are you going up to people? What are you doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Why? No, but the, the surprising thing is, very few people had a really cool story. Like it was never well. I strained my shoulder while, while, while rescuing a dog from a car that was on fire. It's stuff like. Well, I was reaching in the in the back seat of my car for a frisbee while sitting in the driver's seat, and I ripped my shoulder apart. Yeah. Boy, it, that so is I mean, a Ace, pull there, too. there's there are people in physical therapy that they were just walking in the grocery store, bent over to get the Clorox, and their back went out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you'll be okay. Don't feel don't feel too bad. Um, now, uh, speaking of uh, recovering, Chick McGee had his gallbladder taken out. And uh, he's doing fine. He should be back Monday. He's going to feel so much better. I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah seriously. He really is. He's know. been having this problem for years. He, that explains a lot. But he didn't know what was wrong. <laughs> God bless him. Yeah, well, he's going to be in a good mood from now on. I know, right? <laughs> Let's no. not get crazy. <laughs> yeah, the they, they, did, they didn't do a lobotomy. They just took out the <laughs> the gallbladder. They, they, did, they didn't do a, a, Joe, a Joe Kennedy Sr. on him. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Chick good. Wanted rule now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, we were so close to being nice. we were actually here. Gosh. Let's see now. Okay, where were we? Um, oh, um, we have to do a jet ski update. Oh, really? We got into a discussion yesterday of jet skis. Love them. And apparently, this is really confusing. I guess they're technically, the generic version of it is personal watercraft. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, a jet ski is a brand name. Oh. As is Sea Dew. This says, Jet Ski is a Kawasaki, the stand-up model. The Wave Runner is a Yamaha. The Sea Dew is a Bombardier out of Canada. So um, we were talking about this because we had an interesting news story. Chris, do you remember the story? Yeah, apparently some guy tried to steal a Sea Dew and didn't know, or a jet ski or whatever you want to call it, and he got it floated out from the dock and he didn't know how to start it. So it was just kind of hanging out there because he couldn't swim, so he couldn't jump off of it. He was in the intercoastal waterway. Right, in Florida. It's so full, they had to come and That's full, save of him. full of gators, right? Yes. Okay. Did they check this guy's blood alcohol level by chance? I uh, don't know. That didn't. That wasn't in the story. I'm just asking. Stop uh, being such a downer. All right. I've like I've wanted to join a gym and I can't even get myself into the parking lot of the gym. This guy doesn't even know how to ride this thing and he's he's riding it. He's getting out there. He's trying. He's starting yeah. something. He's, we all got to be more of a go getter like this guy. He's a thief. He's. I don't care. He's he's going outside the box. All right. No. I, he can't I don't, swim. I, I'm wondering what he was going to do with it yeah. if he got it started. Hey, Pat, are there any pawn shops along the river <laughs> that you can just ride you can always find something. You can always find something, Jeff. <laughs> Hobos to trade with. <laughs> They're out there. Yeah. And, Jeff, you, you were saying that they, they don't have a key, per se. There's just some kind right, of... Right. It's like a clip that, uh, that, that basically, like, knocks off a... I, yeah, I guess some uh, treadmills have those. Yeah, and, yeah. I don't so if you here. fall off, the thing just goes around in circles. Right. It it uh, it disengages and then turns the steering wheel and circles you until you. It'd be really oh. funny before. I mean, I wonder if in the early days they didn't have that, and some guy <laughs> jumps away, and then the thing just. 
takes off. off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Must have, yes. Well, your, your C2 washed up on the shores of Bermuda. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, in, in any event, this guy was arrested. They had to rescue him because he didn't know how to how to swim. So, uh, I Omaha still think makes we a should, nice one. And he was 48 years old, so he should have known better. We He's should, a dreamer. We no should dream. change it to boater cycle, mm -hmm. like you said. Robert. I like that's that. A, that's that's all encompassing of all watercraft, personal watercraft. Yep. Nice. The boater cycle. cycle. It's a movement, people. But if you uh, if you don't know how to start one, ride one, and can't swim, and don't have a life jacket, probably a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm glad this guy didn't go parachuting. Stick uh, to land stealing. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's a nice positive spin. Yeah. Stick now, to so the catalytic converter. We decided yeah. we're spreading sports out since Chick is not here. You did. So you did decide that. Yes. And so who's going to take over? Well, I'll go ahead and get this uh, real sports story out of the way. <laughs> All right. And then uh, Jeff has a world record, and Willie has a world record as uh, well. You had to literally paste that back together, didn't you? Well, I had to sort of arrange it, the, the one I tore up out of anger and frustration. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jalen Brown scored 27 points. Jason Tatum added 26. And guess what? The Boston Celtics beat back another third quarter onslaught. Um, by, <laughs> I, I really am piecing these pieces of paper right now, the by the Golden State Warriors in a 116-100 victory. So uh, what do they lead, 2-1 to one now? That's mm -hmm. great. I don't know. You have the sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oscar, you have your uh, sports story? This is a uh, stupid world record. Oh, already? Uh, yeah, let me get on my readers. <laughs> and then uh, do you have the music over there, too? Uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> look at me go. See? Chick shop's so easy. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Can you give this to me because you knew I wouldn't be able to pronounce Not at all. Word. I gave it to you because Tom told me to. Uh, Jewel Osco, Fresh Del Monte. Is so, Jewel Osco is like a Walgreens, CVS. It's a, it's a, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Chicago. And Fresh Del Monte, of course. We all really yeah, wish sure. her. Attempt to break... Record for that's, world's that, that's, largest. That, 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 are you reading the heading? Are you that, reading? That's that? the headline. You drop oh, down yeah. to the text of the article. You're like the kid in class that reads the oh, chapter name gosh. first. Chapter two. <laughs> you Boy, sons you of live. Bitches. <laughs> uh, yeah. It all uh, looks and, so easy from the outside. An it? Illinois <laughs> supermarket chain teamed up with Del Monte to uh, Del Monte. break. No, not not where I'm from, Tom. Del Monte. Del Monte. Really? Yeah. It's Spanish for of the Monte. Yes. <laughs> to break a Guinness World Record, uh, they said uh, it successfully broke the record for the largest fruit display with a 77,000-pound uh, <laughs> banana display. Oh. At its location. Yeah, you were thinking what I was thinking? Mont. That guy wearing the short shorts in the tennis court. <laughs> Do not want to see that hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a boy, There's a lot of fruit on display there. Testicles. But I don't care at all, man. <laughs> oh, wow. How's You've testicles? seen that guy, Christy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bends oh, over in the yeah. huge sack. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. The chain said over 200,000 bananas uh, used for the uh, successful attempt would be handed out for free and well, donated to a uh, food bank. How are I was they going to say, aren't we, having an, aren't we in a banana shortage or the... No, but I... I, I not yet. I, I, aren't they all going to be rotten before they get them distributed? Exactly. They're going to have to cover Illinois with free bananas. Yeah, wait Thanks. three days and they'll have the world record for the <laughs> largest brown. amount of bees. <laughs> no, are they, no, the largest banana bread exactly. ever made. There you go. <laughs> Do you have rotting bananas in your freezer right now like I have for the last two and a half years? To make banana bread with? Yeah. No, but Do you that peel has them? Uh, my lady has been saving these bananas to make banana bread, and we've been together now six years. I've yet to see a uh, bread. Are they, are, they, are they peeled and sealed? Or? No, they're just like uh, in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, I don't know uh, how I'd use those. Unpeeled. Why? They're frozen. Okay. Uh, they get freezer burnt. Yeah, well. Uh, oh, no, the, the banana bread will be awful. <laughs> but they're, they're safe, is what I'm saying. Oh, sure. There will never be any banana bread. <laughs> anyway. My now, wait a minute. Are you sure she's, your girlfriend's using these frozen bananas? <laughs> oh, boy. Here we for go. For some <laughs> and recipe have you, coming up. Have you ever heard the famous uh, Pinkerton Bowden frozen hot dog oh, story? Oh, man. That's, no. It's the greatest. It's a true story. Okay. Um, the Richard Bowden was uh, house-sitting um, for... Um, 
some friends. Uh, and uh, and he told this story, so we know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Reliable narrator. Yes, <laughs> and. Yes, it is Richard Bowden, but and, go ahead. Uh, um, Richard, at the time, was uh, suffering from some pretty serious hemorrhoids. <laughs> and <laughs> he had been told by his doctor that he could uh, uh, cool the piles by uh, <laughs> by by uh, tucking a uh, some like a, a, a hot dog a frozen hot dog down there <laughs> which which he did and he would keep the hot dog in a uh, in a baggie like and, running the length of the buns <laughs> or yeah, I, don't, I don't know yeah I I'm not sure if they were um, inserted or just kind of uh, coasting <laughs> along the uh, <laughs> The roids uh, in, the, in the gluteal cleft. The point being, um, oh. he would keep this particular hot dog in, in a in a baggie in the freezer, and he <laughs> left it there when he when he moved out. And the the people came back, and he just found out that they had actually eaten the hot dog. <laughs> oh no, they yeah. didn't market dog like <laughs> like, like chick did with past <laughs> peanut butter <laughs> special <laughs> hot dog. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, that's a fine world record, ladies uh. and gentlemen. Um, Pat, you ready in there? I am ready. Next break, like I told you, I have okay. to capo up. <laughs> you son of a... <laughs> we'll get some music coming up. How long does it take up. to capo? I don't understand. It, it. just it takes it out of tune. It would be annoying to hear me over very here. Very fair too. question. Ah, gotcha. That's you. a very fair question. Willie's got a world record. You yeah. do, oh, what do you got, Willie? Oh, well, uh, two runners... From... Hey, don't read the top part. It's the headline. <laughs> 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 what about the source? Did I say the source and the date? And we no. need the music, too. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Jake makes it look easy. So easy. Two runners from Scotland have broken the Guinness World Record for the most consecutive marathons. According to Running Magazine, Faye Cunningham and Emma Petrie completed 106 marathons, running a total of approximately 2,000. 777 miles. Yeah, That's like uh, from here to like New York City. That's <laughs> exactly. way. The pair are awaiting. The pair are awaiting. The pair is awaiting, right? The pair is awaiting verification from Guinness. That's what it should be, right? No, the uh, pair they are waiting. What no, it's the pair. It's it's but the they're, they're functioning as one. The pair is awaiting. Yeah. Guys, your, your grammar nerdery is driving me crazy. <laughs> you are the grammar nerd. What are you oh, talking right. about, guys? What do you mean? <laughs> so the I was I read a little deeper into this. This says they did 106 marathons in 106 days. What? Does that mean, are there places that do a marathon on a Tuesday? Well, you could do your own marathon. You don't oh, have to. Oh, these aren't to... sanctioned. Well, okay. it didn't say right. 106 I mean, could... days in a row. That's... Oh, it doesn't. That's true. Oh, so it says most consecutive. <laughs> well, I mean, I if it's not in a row, then. It says for, for <laughs> yeah, most consecutive. So they mo ran 26 miles a day for 161 days straight. Willie, what does the story say? It says most consecutive marathons. Mm, um, I don't know. No, no, the, it, it's, it's at one every day. Here's, here's a I think picture. Your, of the them. body would need to rest. Yeah, you would think. It says they, they completed their final marathon 106 days later. So, uh, wow. Good for them. I know I'm still resting from the marathon I've never done. <laughs> well, I think the closest thing you've ever had was when you had the runs for six days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in 2020. Oh, I'll never forget hydrate. that. No, no, no. <laughs> never heard the end of it. One time I ate 26.2 hot dogs. That was a fun day. <laughs> oh, man. And the point, too, how cute is that? Just a tiny Aww. little hot dog. Cute bun. That's Just, kind of like my hot dog. A hot dog a mile. <laughs> Do you suppose that, I mean, these women probably have, like, 106 swag bags, you know, full of cheap water bottles they'll never use. I just thought of all the blisters <laughs> A bunch on their of feet. Logo stuff, <laughs> crappy pens, lip balm. <laughs> now, you know they have lip balm, and I'm not talking for the face. Right. Ah. They're lubed up. They are me. chafed beyond yeah. belief down right. there. <laughs> do you got a tape? Is there a taping thing that you do if you're. It depends. Oh, with the boobs? Mm -hmm. From the depends nips? How yeah, big I think you they are. tape the nips. Mm -hmm. Even the fellas, I think, tape the yeah, nipples. Yeah, you can. Wow. Shape, shape them off, probably. I tape I don't them know. my nips. Uh, I tape right now, um, shape them off. The song, shape them off. Right now, before we get uh, that song out of Mr. Godwin, I want to uh, ask Josh about uh, plans for uh, maybe some perfect gifts coming up this Father's Day. Maybe those brothers are fathers. Of course they are. So what do they want? They want steaks. Tell me more, Josh. That's exactly right. Father's Day just around the corner. Visit omahasteaks.com, type BTS into the search bar, order the Dad's Want Steaks package. Asuke's a dad, and I know he wants steak.
That's How do right. I know that? He had some the other night. And he said they were delicious. Mm -hmm. He wants more. For 99 bucks. this limited time package includes 16 mouth-watering entrees. Old Pop is guaranteed to love. Let me tell you what's in here. The smoky, tender, bacon-wrapped filet mignons, gourmet jumbo franks, air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, much, much more, including the sweet, sweet caramel apple tartlets. Oh, what a way to finish off any meal. As a special gift for you, our listeners, when you type BTS into the search bar and order the Dad's One Steaks package, you're also going to get eight free Omaha Steaks burgers. These burgers are so full of flavor. They're beefy, and they're a whopping six ounces, and they're all made from 100% Omaha Steaks. Don't wait. Send Dad more than just a gift. Send him an experience that, hey, He'll share with you. That's right. Go to omahasteaks.com, type BTS into the search bar, and order the Dad's Want Steaks package. You'll get 16 entrees and four desserts, plus eight free Omaha Steaks. Yum, 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 yum. Omaha Steaks isn't just steak. It's the best steak of your life. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword BTS. Coming up, we've got a song from Mr. Godwin in the news. Some really interesting stuff. we got a guy that uh, mistook... Uh, an alligator for a dog. What? Uh, <laughs> idiot. We have a moose on the loose. We have fake urine in the news. Oh. Wow. Hmm. I'm pissed. <laughs> or wait a minute. Maybe I'm not. It's <laughs> uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Everything about the show is at bobandtom.com. Check it out now. State law. got some extra from the Bob and Tom Show. With us in the studio, comedian uh, John Garrett. You have a straight job? I mean, like a normal day-to-day -day thing? Yeah, I actually do. I'm actually a CPA, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, and, um, that spells party. Yeah, it does. Most people find it think uh, CPAs are hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, we're dorks. Uh, big dorks. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and honestly, on behalf of all accounts out there, I'd like to say that we don't all do taxes. Some of us prefer to embezzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more lucrative. <laughs> I read recently uh, Willie Nelson wrote a song called Whatever Happened to Peace on Earth mm -hmm. as his little protest to the war in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And my immediate thought was, why does he care? It's not like it's his tax dollar being put to use. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think the U.S. <laughs> US government should write a song called Whatever Happened to Willie's 1040. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tax joke for the accountants. <laughs> Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. What up, Dr. Will? Mark Allison with you as we roll through this Thursday morning together. Yes, it is June 9th, and we are rolling nearly at full strength. Again, Chick McGee out, having separated from his gallbladder. It was a medical procedure. The doctor said everything went fine. He's recovering and recuperating and being the Chick McGee at the compound, safe and warm there with his dog, Monkey. So everything's well, and Chick should be back on Monday. Thanks to Jeff Oske for sitting in this morning. Al Jackson and comedian Brian Dunkelman on the way on a Thursday right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning. I'm Mark Allison with things you may have missed. Olympic gold medalist Simone Biles and dozens of other women who say they were sexually assaulted by Larry Nassar are seeking more than $1 billion from the FBI for failing to stop the sports doctor. No dispute, FBI agents in 2015 knew Nassar accused of assaulting gymnasts, but the agents failed to act, leaving the doctor free to continue targeting young women and girls. For more than a year, individual lawsuits could follow the tort claims filed on Wednesday. Claimants include Biles, Ali Reisman, and Michaela Maroney, all Olympic gold medalists. 
an email seeking comment sent to the FBI. Remarks to Congress last year, FBI Director Christopher Wray acknowledged there were major mistakes. In other things you may have missed, it's now legal to cultivate and possess marijuana in Thailand, but the country still discourages smoking pot and getting high. Products containing more than a tiny amount of THC, the chemical that makes people high, still illegal in that country. The government is warning those eager to light up for fun that smoking in public could still be considered a nuisance subject to jail and fines. Thailand mainly wants to make a splash in the market for medical marijuana. It already has a well-developed medical tourism industry and its tropical climate ideal for growing cannabis. The country's public health minister plans to begin distributing one million marijuana seedlings for cultivation across the country on Friday. And that's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey man, it's Donnie Baker. And the fact remains, there's nothing better than being a VIP. And I don't mean like his dudes on Pervert Rabbit Xanadu's. I'm talking about a Bob and Tom VIP. Best thing, you'll never miss another minute of the show. I swear to God, you can hear the show here in the morning, and then cause you're a Bob and Tom VIP, you'll get the podcast of the entire show, a 12-month library of podcasts, hundreds of Bob and Tom comedy tapes, and a 60-day video archive of the show. Bob and Tom VIP. You have to get it. It's state law. Hey, guy, it's Ken Tarmac. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Take that to the bank. <laughs> 24-7. I know. Morning, Bob and Tom show. Hey, gang, it's Ken Tarmac. Kenny! Hey, we just landed. I got a call on the white courtesy phone. I'll tell you what. What? Corporate has spy goggles today. Oh, they can oh, find me anywhere. Really? So I'm on the plane. I'm on the 620 guy. Like uh, I was saying, uh -huh. I'm next to some guy that kept going on and on and on today. Yeah. And almost ruined. Oh, gosh. Oh, I have another phone call. You do? Oh, and it's Tobik. Uh-oh. And I don't want to take this one. Why not? Hey, you want to hear a trick? Well, okay. Watch how I lose them. All you have to do is duplicate your voicemail greeting, and they have no idea it's not you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just listen to this. All right. I'm going to click over. Okay. Listen. All I've right. got to memorize it, though. Okay. Okay, get, Okay. hang tight. Hi, you've reached gold level sales leader Kenneth Tarmac. <laughs> I'm sorry I can't take your call at the moment. But your call is very important to me. I check messages every quarter hour unless in flight, in which in case I'll answer upon landing. <laughs> so after the tone, please leave me your name, two numbers, and a brief message. Or you can Skype page, text, or preferably email me at ktar underscore backslash closer dot com. <laughs> <laughs> He's still talking. Is he talking? Yeah, he's still chatting me up. Oh, God. I'll catch you later. Oh, bye. I'll get enough of this. All right, bye. We just landed and I pulled it off again. Oh, you oh, did? Great. I okay. don't believe I called Bob and Tom. Hi, man, this is Donnie Biker. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Why do you have to get drunk to be an ass? Why do you have to get tight before you get loose? Why do you need a double before you get into trouble? Can't you get into trouble without an excuse? You want to get up and get out and get free and get crazy. But why do you have to start by getting stoned? Because, Pat, you don't have to get drunk to be an ass. You can be an ass on your own. <laughs> Hello, this is comedian John Evans, and you're listening to Bright.com. Hey, it's the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> I'm sorry, I waited half a second. There's Christy Lee. Dead air, my friend. <laughs> Why can't we just all be nice to each other? You shut it up. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Hi. There's Pat Godwin. Hi, Josh. Jeff Oski. You got the capo on there, Elvis? Good to go there. Okay. Colonel finally. Parker. 47 <laughs> minutes in, he's finally got the you, capo on. You ain't nothing but a hand dog. <laughs> I can't wait to see that movie. Jeff Oski, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Good, good. Chick uh, still recovering from gallbladder surgery. He's doing just fine. Ace Cosby not doing as well. He has a crick in his neck. Got to uh -huh. power through, man. Yes, and you're doing a terrific job. Willie Griswold powering through as well. He's acting like this is Michael Jordan's flu game. Ace <laughs> powering through. Gotta win, man. Gotta win. And, uh, uh, what's, the, what, what's the difficulty you're having? There's, issue? there's Tom already talking. Yeah, already. <laughs> well, we, I just want to get to the interesting part. Have you is... ever had your days where you can't turn your neck? Yep. Slept on my head wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Which way can't you turn? That way. That, that would be to your left. That's very helpful. <laughs> that way. I love it when I love it when sports announcers go and the team uh, on moving from left to right. Uh, 
Well, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> if you're unless you're on the other side of the field, then they're moving right to the left. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Godwin in the uh, in the performance room, as was indicated earlier. And uh, Pat, you uh, are you going to feature something from your new album, your captured live album? I'm going to do something from way back when. Oh, okay. released last October. Uh, a little summer song for you. Here we go. <laughs> you never returned my rake, and you don't cut your lawn. Play Skinner down the weekends loud Some nights till the crack of dawn Turn it down <laughs> Got a mean old dog Cars on block six kids A dead oak tree Hands your brawless elderly mom He's on the porch for all to see Oh, I've never been so annoyed Living next to you At tonight's neighborhood party I'll Tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna slow dance with your mother at the backyard barbecue. Get her all hot and bothered, even though she's 82. <laughs> I'll put on Freebird and get your mom to dance. She'll have one hand on my butt and the other down my pants. Oh. I'll dirty dance with your mama, <laughs> make her boobs jiggle and shake. <laughs> and I'll bet you by tomorrow. You'll return my rake. <laughs> oh, that was a story with a moral. Ah, oh, revenge. Uh, is that, isn't that nice? Thank you, Pat. Uh, Thank Pat's you. Uh, got a new album called Captured Live. And Pat's part of a special live show we're going to be doing coming up pretty soon. Uh, I also want to mention that, um, speaking of cool shows, Willie and uh, Jeff Oskey and David Brooks are doing a free show. Get tickets in advance at the Pivot Brewing Company, Lexington KY, mm -hmm. the Commonwealth of Kentucky, ladies and gentlemen. That show coming up Saturday, June 18th. Uh, um, have your children uh, learned the uh, your mom as a response yet? <laughs> That's going around my house. Remember what? from when we were right. kids? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, so what are you up to? Your mom. What are you doing? Oh, your mom. Oh, gosh. Like, um, and so the other day we were at dinner, and I was like, uh, what are you guys doing? And all three of them together were like, your mom. And I was like, I'm the only one in here who's done anyone's mom. And I've done both of your moms. So you guys all need to pipe down. And that was uh, the quietest dinner we've ever had. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Now, coming up this weekend, uh, Josh, you're going to be seeing your mom. Yeah, I will. Very exciting. You haven't seen her since pre-COVID That's days. right, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. sweet. That'll be nice. Now, what, what are you kind of gift you getting her? Uh, what am I... I, I do well, she own... doesn't need any gifts. She's rich. <sighs> no, 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 Christy. She's married to a man named Rich. Oh. Oh, so, yeah. You know I just like I that very, very much. much. <laughs> uh, no, did you get her a nice little something-something? Uh, I have some... I have a Mother's Day gift for this year. So instead Can of you saying, say what it is, or is it probably... Well, no, then no, it they may be listening. Surprise. Your mother never listens. You told me she sleeps in. She never listens to this show. Oh, don't. It's a Bob blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my mother does have a Tom blanket, and she calls it her Bob blanket. That would be funny. Get her a yeah, Bob Well, again, uh, that, the Bob, the difference is a distinction. Uh, that one won't get her pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, but you have a little something for her. Yeah. You? Haven't uh -huh. seen her for a long time. And um, Steaks? I, I, no, I do not have Omaha steaks for her. I got those for other people. Okay, okay, I'm just, but you can't say what you got your mom. I'm not going to. That's right. Okay. Why do you? Why, want why to are you trying to so ruin a ago. surprise? Just uh, how's it going to ruin the surprise? <laughs> she could be listening, okay. and if not now, then later. Yeah, her so, brother, his brother's yeah, listening. Yeah. Oh, did you hear Josh got you? Da, 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 da. Your okay. son's bringing you. Yeah, and this is you don't care about gifts at all. I don't yeah, care why you like you're taking any surprises. interest in this in this topic. Mm. What's the best gift you ever received? Oh, God, I don't have to give that some Quiet. thought. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer is sitting to your left. Uh, sleep. Aww. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Wilbur, of course. <laughs> My great son. Yes. How you guys doing? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. well, I just, as long as you've got something for it, I just want to make sure. That yeah, thank you very you, much. You haven't seen her in two years. Nice card. card. No, no, I'm not going to give her a card. I'll give her a big old hug. Okay, okay, very It's worth good. more than the card. People don't need cards. I like giving cards. Do you? I like altering them, though. 
Okay. Like That's one of my favorite it, things. Uh, buying it for the wrong occasion. and Sympathy card. Hey, Mom, uh, happy about your bat mitzvah, and you cross uh. it out and go, uh, yeah. Mother's Day <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I'll use I'll, I'll use cards that were given to me, and I cross out my name and give it to <laughs> like, just one line for my... Are you serious? Oh, it always gets a laugh, yeah. <laughs> just deeply personal messages. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Condolences. So sad to hear about your scratch Mother's Day. <laughs> nice recycled cards. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, don't, don't you let you ever get car, you get cards you draw little drawings on them and stuff. No, oh, I don't. That's nice. That's I don't nice. draw very well, so why would I? I mean, I even better. Nobody draws. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. you. <laughs> Who are you giving these cards to? What is this? Willie, do you have these cards at home? I have never gotten a single card. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Well, you're right here. Why would I get you a card? I can just take a piece of paper and hand it to you. Here. Wanna, are you just want to see this? your schedule about the gigs you're doing? I got it right here. In the room. Uh, coming up, we have. Um, Does your lady like to get cards? Uh, I think so. Okay. How about from you? <laughs> yeah, mostly from the boyfriend. Cards. Um, Credit no. cards, said Godwin. <laughs> The sniper. Yeah, there's, sniper. A, there's, a, there's, a, there's a history there. <laughs> <laughs> now, bad at pawn shops. Do they give you, is it a pawn card or a pawn ticket? It's a ticket. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up, we have a letter referencing the uh, the importance of pawn shops. Pawn tickets easier to lose. Yeah. That's yeah. why they give those out. Okay. Thank God I know those guys. <laughs> um, Do you have a pawn shop song? Yeah. Well, can we come back with that? Sure. All right. All that'll right. be fun. Okay. Uh, coming up in the news, also, we have a moose in the loose. we got an alligator. Uh, 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 this is weird. We have a zebra. Huh. A yeah. loose zebra we've here in the, in the U.S. of A. We'll yeah. find out about that. We've been talking about moms. We have baby names in the news today. I know that's one of your favorite things. And a guy that's tired of gas prices, so he's shutting down his gas station. So I'm out. He's just not going to sell gas anymore. Okay. It's not going to be open much longer. <laughs> He's still, that'll show him. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at 1 888 Bob Tom 1 or at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Jeff Rothpan here in the studio with us. When I was a kid, all these other kids got to go to the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember begging my dad, please, I want to go. All the other kids are going. He said, no, we just can't afford it. Tickets are expensive. He ended up taking us to this Bob Circus. It was actually called, <laughs> no, this is true. Bob, Bob circus. circus. Yeah. And it was in a mall parking lot. <laughs> and what a difference. I remember the guy yelling, and now huge midgets. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, there was just one after another. The, the bearded man. <laughs> I think they actually had the talking mute. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? How does he do it? Uh, <laughs> he's amazing. He's a mute, yet he speaks. <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. If you want to turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> hey, keep in mind, coming up this Saturday, Donnie Baker is going to be in Osgood, Indiana at the Dam Theater. DonnieBaker.com for tickets and information. And Omaha, Nebraska, Donnie Baker at the Funny Bone coming up next weekend, a week from this Saturday and Friday. The 17th and the 18th is what I'm trying to say if you're looking at a calendar. 
Donnie Baker will be at the Funny Bone in Omaha, Nebraska. So keep your eyes open for Donnie Baker out on the road. And you can always find out more at DonnieBaker.com. As we roll through on this Thursday, it's June 9th, as I said. My name, Mark Allison. Your name? That's when you fill in your name. Okay, you'll learn to play along. Sometimes I throw curveballs at you, but that's all right. Let's just sit back, relax, and have more fun. Al Jackson and Brian Dunkelman on the way right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom news update. A helicopter carrying six people has crashed in a lava field in Hawaii. The tour helicopter with a pilot and five passengers crashed Wednesday near the southernmost tip of the Big Island. The site was inaccessible by vehicle, so the Hawaii Fire Department sent two helicopters to take victims to ambulances waiting at nearby roads. The pilot had been trapped but was later extracted and in serious stable condition. An 18-year-old woman's reported in serious condition. Four people reported as ambulatory. All have been safely evacuated from the site. Scorching temperatures are in store for the southwestern U.S. over the next several days. Cities like Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Palm Springs are expected to top 110 degrees. Heat is part of the normal routine of summertime in the desert. But weather forecasters say that doesn't mean people should feel at ease. Excessive heat, of course, causes more deaths than the U.S. than any other weather-related disaster. And from toilet paper to yogurt to corn chips, manufacturers are quietly shrinking package sizes without lowering prices. That's right. You're not imagining it. It's dubbed shrinkflation, and it's accelerating worldwide. For example, here in the U.S., a small box of Kleenex now has 60 tissues. A few months ago, it had 65. Over in the U.K., Nestle has slimmed down coffee tins from 100 grams to 90 grams. Shrinkflation isn't new as companies grapple with rising costs for ingredients, packaging, labor, and transportation. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Do you know a dad who's a big Bob and Tom fan? Well, get him a Father's Day gift he'll open every day. A membership to Bob and Tom VIP. The link to get it is right at the top of our website, bobandtom.com. I bet you were fun in school. Had a good time at school. Yeah, I bet the teachers loved you. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. They uh-huh. did. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to school. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you about this. <laughs> you look like you spend a lot of time lifting weights. Are you a fitness Oh, buff? yeah, I like to pump a little iron. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I drink the protein shakes, take the vitamins, take the St. John's for my wart. I do the whole thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a wart, dude. I like to go out and chalk up. The whole key is chalking up. You got to mm-hmm. chalk up when you go. You got to chalk it up. I got the weight belt on. Shakes dig the weight belts. They dig the weight belts with the name on the back. You know, Steve. <laughs> I don't know who Steve is, but he's missing his weight belt. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were waiting for? That's the, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like to pump it up. You got to be in top shape because I play golf. You do. You guys know the golf bit. Oh, yeah. I love, I love golf. golf. I got a lot of golf. I got some new golf jokes. I play yeah. a lot of golf. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every hole, like 14,000 strokes. That's a lot of golf. You know what I mean? <laughs> I look like a propeller out there just swinging away. <laughs> I love golf. I swing with one hand. I don't even use two hands. I don't care. The instructor's always trying to change your grip. Like, hey, you're not the boss of me. (laughs) I hit that ball as hard as I can, walk six feet, and hit it again. (laughs) Every hole I use the driver. Par three, I don't want to see a seven iron. I let the big dog eat. I grip and rip it. I got the weight belt on. Steve's playing some golf, baby. (laughs) You give me a golf cart, a 12-pack, and a lake, I'll show you how to have fun all day. You ever wonder how far a golf cart can go on a lake before it sinks? You ever wonder? 13 feet! I love golf. What a sport. It's a good sport. Essential morning radio. All day and all night. Really? No, seriously. Really? Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. 24/7. Hey, it's Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Welcome to the Bob and Tom Show. There's Christy Lee. Hey, Josh Arnold. Pat Godwin all set to do another tune here. Hi, Josh. Hi, man. Jeff Oske. Howdy. He brought in his shore lunch for us to enjoy later on. Yum, yum, yum. 
Chick McGee still out, uh, feeling very good, though, after his gallbladder surgery. Thanks for all your well wishes. And caller 9 gets that gallbladder, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, he'll sign it for you. Did and, he save uh, at least a stone? Well, they, they have to, they have to uh, don't they have to do some kind of... They send it to pathology, yeah. ...post-operative analysis yes. of the gallbladder. Yep. Then you yep. fry it up like a little shore lunch. Oh. Oh. A little fat, oh. uh, some uh, breading. Uh. And There's Mr. Ace Cosby with that joke of the day uh, on the back burner. Just simmering, waiting for us. It's in the crock pot. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, so it Didn't might take a mean to have the metaphor wrong. <laughs> 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 Willie Griswold, how are you? It's in the crock pot, my friend. <laughs> I like that's actually better than the back burner. It's cool. <laughs> Tom Griswold over there. I'm Josh Arnold, and uh, we'll be back with uh, more after this. Oh, no, this is the... Oh, we just got here. Yeah, we, that's, that's what we're finding. That was good, though. I like that. Getting out early. Uh, let's see now. Um, we have uh, Mr. Godwin in the next room. And before we move on, um, you said you had a little something you wanted to do for us? Yeah, yeah. our pawn shop. Pawn so. shop thing okay, we now, uh, we were talking about uh, <laughs> pawn tickets. Um, and let me just Have read you ever this, pawned uh, anything in your life? I don't think I've ever been. No, it's amazing, is the answer. Have you ever been in a pawn shop? I'm trying. I don't, I don't think I have. Some good stuff. I had to once. Yeah. Yeah. What, you did, you, the, what did you get rid of? I, I, I got it back, but I had to pawn something at the time. It was a ring, but I needed some money. I mean, you know, times okay. are tough. All right. The most depressing, uh, the most depressing <laughs> item in the pawn shop, kids' bikes. Oh, because you know they didn't ride them in. <laughs> they just well, there's our theme for today, Daddy, show. Daddy did. Most depressing things in a pawn shop. I, uh, oh, Jeffy, that has to be the winner. Uh, I don't know. It's CPAP cool. machine. Oh, wow. <laughs> that and the old wedding rings. Yeah. And, and the Lots best is when you see rings. a couple shopping for wedding rings at the pawn yeah, shop, just... and you're like, well, first of all, oh, you guys probably that's... shouldn't be getting married, <laughs> like, let alone getting those kind of uh, kids' bikes. That oh, is really Where else something. can you buy guitars, guns, and human teeth at the same <laughs> store? You can pawn your teeth? Yeah, like if you have like if you have like gold an old film. like gold tooth or something, you yeah. can totally pawn it. How or about just, how about wow. dentures? Can you bring those in? I wouldn't. I, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> we've, had, we've had a couple stories about people that have retrieved other people's dentures. And remember the guy that wrote the letter? He was uh, they, they were, he was eating at this restaurant, and there was an old couple across the way, and the one guy okay, yeah, I remember finished, now. and then he took him out and handed him to his. Oh, <laughs> that man, is nuts, that wife. Is... Sharing. Yeah, that's that's just, love. Yes, mm -hmm. there must there should be some government program to provide these people with proper teeth. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, someone's been paying very close attention to the show. Chad is his name. Hi, Chad. And uh, Chad is a uh, uh, works in the realm of uh, healthcare. He writes, given all the elements that uh, Willie, Pat, Tom, and Chick seem to have, wouldn't it be advantageous for you guys to have a staff doctor on the payroll? Because <laughs> I'm sure Christy has quote a friend. I do. That could do this. <laughs> Yes, um, Dr. Jake would do it. Okay, well, uh, he said that he's been reviewing the internet usage uh -huh. of, uh, of our show. Oh. Uh, and he said, when, when we're in the air, we have, we're all hooked up. We can check things on the internet. He says there is an inordinate amount of searches for WebMD and 1950s television. <laughs> um, we see a spike in porno searches and conspiracy theories. There also appears to be a great deal of internet betting during your show. Ah. <laughs> uh, then it goes, someone seems to be searching for best pawn shop store prices <laughs> to hawk regular household items. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think they're talking to you there, Pat. Oh, um, yeah. So uh, lastly, there is a great number of searches for someone looking at beach properties, vacations, searching things like, quote, any place but here. And God give me strength. He's on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that's all about. But um, now, Pat, you had a rough spot there a couple of years ago. Are you uh, rough spot right now? Yeah, we, we we got you out Aww. of your mom's got you out of your mom's basement and yeah. uh, oh, got yeah. you in here. And it's uh, much better now. You're, uh, you, how many guitars do you have at the pawn shop right now? Uh, two. I have a. Talk to me the there and a ukulele. Yeah. Wait, which, where's this pawn shop? It's up in Ohio, uh, American Pond, Lima, okay. Okay. Ohio. Now, how long do they keep your guitar before they sell it? Uh, that's a good question. Three to three to six months, I think. How long have they been there? Is it two months. Okay, the clock is ticking. I okay. got a month. Okay, well, uh, American Pawn, please don't get rid of those guitars. Go ahead, Pat. <laughs> I have a Fender Strat and a Martin D28. Ooh. A brand new ukulele <laughs> in a fancy bamboo case. Down at the pawn shop, that's where they'll be. Oh, yeah. 
Until I come up with the cash I have till July 19th. Ready, boys? Down at the pawn shop. Who is the jewelry and gun? Down at the pawn shop. Getting divorced is fun. Down at the pawn shop. Locked up in the bed. Down at the pawn shop. A guy in lines on crack. Down, Down at, at the, the pawn, pawn shop. shop. Pawn shop. Well, life has kicked my ass. Sad to see my marriage fail. Yeah, I'm sad. <laughs> I gotta pay my child support or I'll end up in jail. Let's do Down at American Pawn in Lima, Ohio. I, I, I go. Oh, oh. Maybe they'll cut me a break. Said their name on the radio. Where? Down at the pawn shop. I need a quickie loan. Down at the pawn shop. My ex-wife's on the phone. Down at the pawn shop. Get out your picture ID. Down at the pawn shop. Aren't you Patty G? Down, Down at, at the, the pawn, pawn shop. Pawn, pawn shop. shop. <laughs> Woo! Yes. All right. Yeah, man. Now, do you have to actually have a pawn ticket like in the movies? You do. I really feel bad, but to say this, but that's one of my favorite songs. I love it. <laughs> it is so good. Uh, Pat Godwin's uh, new album is out there, and it's called Captured Live. Uh -huh. And it was uh, number one on the charts there last week. Very nice, Pat. Nice algorithm. Thank um, you, um, And uh, now we have uh, 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 Christy Lee at the uh, Bob and Tom News Desk. Oh, wait, wait a second. Wait. What? What's that I smell? I don't know. What is it? Did, did, did someone open up the slow cooker? <laughs> 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 Joke of the day. A lot of museum robberies have been in the news lately, and uh, I wonder why people would rob museums. Oh, that's where the Monet is. Yes, oh, he's, that is. Joke of the day. Yeah. he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else isn't wrong? Getting your dad's steak for Father's Day. Go to omahasteaks.com, type BTS into the search bar, order the dad's one steaks. Package. You'll get 16 entrees and four desserts, plus eight free Omaha Steaks burgers. Thank you, Omaha Steaks. Mm, you know what dads want for Father's Day? Steak. Do you know what steaks want? Dads. dads to eat them. Mm -hmm. There you go. They want dads to eat them, you see. Mm -hmm. Now you're implying that that poor steak. <laughs> it's a dad. <laughs> it was an orphan. I just, I just want a papa. I want to thank Chick for the cutting grass thing, too, because we cut the grass yesterday, and all I could think about was the grass crying. because. <laughs> oh, Chick read a story that the smell of grass is actually... Sort of the, the the injury of the grass. Yes. That's, uh, that's all I could think about. Really? Yeah. <laughs> God, bleeding heart. Because I saved it. The grass is still bird. alive. Yeah, okay? it's still it's growing. It's the same as getting a haircut. Okay. Do you sweep up the shavings of your hair and put them in a jar? No, I do not. What? That's you don't? Lucky. What a no. weirdo. Yeah, you gotta save it. <laughs> Chick's just leaving her hair there on the floor. Don't tell me when you save your nails, you mix your fingernails and your toenails. Oh, uh, I don't you do can't any do that. of that. You gotta have a separate jar. Yeah, you gotta uh, save them and then you turn them into little dolls and you send them to your exes. Gosh. You guys I, don't do that? They love them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually had this come up in my feed yesterday on Facebook. Uh, one of my ex girlfriends posted a link on how to befriend a tree. Oh jeez! Oh, yeah, and I you, see why you? I can see why you dumped her. Is that on Facebook or dodged bullets? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Jeff, you see that? You give it a love react. Yeah. You're like, there you go. I love that. I I'm love gone. that I'm no longer with you. Oh my gosh! Uh, so when did you get off the drugs? Wow, <laughs> that's uh, that's rough. Yeah, rough. Yeah, it was an entire article. Like there's to befriend a tree. What? How did the tree wrong her? No, this is uh, any how tree to make new friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How to make a friend? Oh, of a tree. oh, that's fun. That's I guess that would be uh, defriend a tree, wouldn't no. it? Is peeing on them part of it? No, uh, there then, was well, something. Then the about... trees at my house don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, coming up, we have your, we have an interesting story about fake urine for sale, and it may become illegal. Right now, I want to talk about. Uh, Tom, you hit your glasses on the <laughs> microphone there. I don't it's know. Radio one hundred and one. I don't know if you knew. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, you did it again, man. Oh, dude, you keep hitting Atta them. Boy. You keep them. He's really mad. <laughs> no one heard it till you pointed it out. <laughs> you said, That's the comedy. Yeah. I love it. The next time you shift your butt I'm and it goes, yeah, I'm going to point it out. <laughs> uh, shave me. <laughs> uh, you know what's uh, inevitable? 
allergies. That's right. Yes. And uh, want to save some money. In fact, Christy was just uh, saving some money a few minutes ago talking about prescriptions. GoodRx is a free app. That's right. And a prescription allergy medication that I'm on, two of them, thank you. Uh, I get to save a lot of money thanks to GoodRx. They compare prescription prices at over 70,000 pharmacies to help find the best price. And you can get discounts up to 80%. I'm down to five bucks, kids. Five bucks. GoodRx recommended by doctors, pharmacists, and 24 million users. That's right. Last year, they saved on medications, and you could be one of those. Whether it's your allergy meds like me or other prescriptions that you need, remember, even if you have insurance, GoodRx could actually beat your prescription copay price. So, simple, smart savings are on your prescriptions right there at GoodRx. Go to GoodRx.com slash Tom. That's GoodRx.com slash Tom. GoodRx is not insurance, but can be used in place of insurance, Medicare, and Medicaid. In 2021, GoodRx users saved up to 80% on retail prescription prices. Coming up, we have uh, having trouble naming your baby. Well, <laughs> someone is out there to help you. Also, something interesting going on at KFC. What could they be out of? Calm down. It's oh. lettuce. Oh, my uh, goodness. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom. 24-7. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> hey, Bob and Tom fans, and especially those that live in the Midwest, maybe within driving range of Indianapolis, how about some live comedy on stage Friday, June 17th, the Irving Theater on East Washington. We're trying to send some local kids to summer camp, and the Bob and Tom show is going to take the stage to make that happen. General admission tickets, 40 bucks. We do have some limited VIP tickets for 100 Those are going fast, so if you'd like VIP tickets, get them now. BobandTom.com slash comedy show. An all-star lineup on stage, bringing the funny Willie Griswold, Jeff Oske, Josh Arnold, and Pat Godwin the number one comedy album in the country, and his guitar, Yes, Please. Did I mention it's going to be hosted by Tom Griswold? And yes, Chick McGee, that's coming up Friday, June 17th, a night of live comedy with the Bob and Tom Show. And again, it's all about sending the kids to summer camp. Hope you can join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be there, bobandtom.com slash comedy show to get your tickets now. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with your Bob and Tom Sports Headlines. Jalen Brown scored 27 points, Jason Tatum 26. The Boston Celtics beat back another third quarter onslaught by the Golden State Warriors. A 116-100 victory, which gives them a 2-1 lead in the NBA Finals. Marcus Smart added 24 points. In baseball, Aaron Nola pitched eight sharp innings, and the surging Phillies hit four home runs to route the scuffling Milwaukee Brewers 10 to nothing. Tony Gosselin improved to 7-0, tossing three-hit ball over six innings. Will Smith and Cody Bellinger homered early to lead the L.A. Dodgers to a 4-1 victory over the Chicago White Sox in interleague action. Byron Buxted and Ryan Jeffers each hit home runs in the fifth inning off Nestor Cortez to send the New York left-hander to an early exit. The Minnesota Twins cruised to an 8-1 victory that stopped the Yankees' seven-game winning streak. In San Diego, Jake Cronenworth homer, doubled, singled, and had five RBI. Sean Manaya pitched seven strong innings to beat former teammate Chris Bassett in the San Diego Padres' 13-2 route of the New York Mets on Wednesday night. Elsewhere in baseball and interleague play, the Cubs at Baltimore was postponed. Detroit got by Pittsburgh 3-1. Atlanta beat Oakland 13-2. Tampa Bay over St. Louis 11-3. In the AL, Kansas City, Cleveland, Seattle, and Boston all win in the National League. Cincinnati blank Cincinnati 7-0. Miami over Washington 2-1. And San Francisco got by Colorado 2-1 as well. That's a look at your sports headlines. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Jim Gaffigan joins us in the studio, a family man, a clean liver. Now, when you're on stage, Jim, you don't do a, a blue kind of show, do you? I'm very clean and kind of, uh, you know, I talk about cake for like an hour because, you know, cake's an <laughs> cake. important topic. Cake, Absolutely. tell me about cake. Oh, well, there's a lot of different, cake's a powerful food. Cake can actually bring people together. You know, it's Bill's birthday. Yeah, I hate that guy. There's cake in the conference room. Well, I should say hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
stories. Who <laughs> am I to pass judgment on him? It's his big day. There's so many types of cake. There's rum cake, which makes sense because we've all been eating cake and thought, you know, this needs booze. <laughs> booze? Bottle of liquor. I don't have time to eat and drink. There's fruit cake. That's a bit of a disappointment. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'd think that would be better. Fruit, good. Right. Cake, great. Right. Fruit cake, nasty crap. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Have you tried fruit cake? I don't even think that's fruit in there. You're like, when is that a Skittle? <laughs> This is Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. 24 7. 24 7. I'm sick of being sick. I've been in my bed all week. I feel like dick. I'm sick of my TV. Now I'm hooked on all the soaps on ABC. <laughs> I try to read a magazine or hear the radio or watch the bad news bears again on NHBO. <laughs> I'm sick of being home. Cause you think of stupid things when you're alone. I'm sick of this old house. And today I might try on my wife's new blouse. <laughs> I saw two women fight like cats on Jerry Springer's show. Because their mom was sleeping with their older brother Joe. I'm sick. I'm feeling bad. But at least my older brother's not my dad. <laughs> I'm sick of these four walls. And my arms are tired of playing with my dog. <laughs> I'm sick. Uh, oh, bravo. Thank you. Bob and Tom. You can pick your morning radio show. And you can pick your nose. But you can't wipe Bob and Tom on the couch. You don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We can't go anymore. <laughs> That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Welcome to the Bob and Tom Show. There's Christy Lee. Who Hi. I'm currently mad at. I was trying to tell a sweet story, and she was making fun of it uh, <laughs> off the air. Here's <laughs> Pat Godwin. Hi, Jack. That's me. Jeff Oske sitting in for Mr. Chick McGee today. Yes. And I think tomorrow as well, huh? Uh, yeah, unless he uh, makes a phenomenal recovery today. Ah, well, if, any, if we know anything about Chick, it's that he's a fighter. <laughs> and he'll Dang. get yeah, That means that if you're here tomorrow, so Warren wasn't available then, I thought you were going to call him. Or... Oh, God. oh, that's off the... Uh, Ace Cosby so <laughs> over there at the engineering so, uh, station. Get well, Chick. Get well. Yes, yes, we're all <laughs> wishing Chick off. well. He's doing very, very well. Take time off, says Ace. <laughs> Willie Griswold sitting in at the... Uh, uh, the, the happy desk. Mm -hmm. I oh, got puzzles. Right. I got coloring books I do over here. I say I'm pretty occupied. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, why do you have hot sauce and flonase right there? <laughs> I have all the stuff that I need. What, Boy, you ever get those mixed up? You're the you're one going to tell me. You got floss sticks and mouthwash. You have gifts from 2007 under there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that puppy is starting to stink. Oh. <laughs> You have inside the first season of Breaking Bad, and it's framed somewhere. <laughs> under there. The Kingsman uh, live album in stereo. Oh, oh I got everything. Boy, you sure do. On vinyl. I'm very pleased. Uh, That's Tom that. Griswold over there. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, coming up, uh, we. Ha oh, well, coming up, I guess we. Ha can you answer the phone? Please? I'd be happy to. Hello, Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom, it's Kenny Tarman. <laughs> Kenny. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Shooter, we just landed. I'd uh, like to say I'm at ATL on my way to MCO through ORD, but instead I've been stuck in STO for the last 24 hours. Oh, wow. all right. I know, I know. My only layover here was a quick touch and go from STO to CVS around 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan of the Sky Lounge here either. Apparently nobody wants to fly a plane anymore. Stupid pilot shortage. <laughs> Not sure if you read about that. I mean, at this point, it might be quicker for me to go to flight school, graduate with honors, than get myself back to ATL myself. I know, right? <laughs> well, there's some issues right now. Hey, <laughs> right, I got to take this. It's my burner phone. And, of course, it's Skyhack Central. It's been happening nonstop. Just a sec. Okay. In tarmac. No, ma'am. I oh, no. I'll have you know, Missy. You can't <laughs> offer me any more sky miles. I already have them all. <laughs> well, what you could do is produce a qualified pilot for this flight that's been delayed for over twenty-four hours now. 
And, and, and no thanks to the survey. Of course I'm upset. My sleep number was Carousel 6 last night. <laughs> yeah, you might be a bit grumpy, too. Bob and Tom, you still there? Yes, we are. Yeah, Kenny, how are you? Well, if you're scoring at home, I'm now 17 hours late to my webinar in Orlando. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, they got the big hologram of Zig Ziglar that's scheduled to appear. And <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I'm supposed to be closing a deal there with a huge whale of a client. Really? Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, literally. They're a Japanese whaling fleet. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're whales, all right. All right, well. <laughs> Bob and Tom, I hate to do this. I <laughs> Deja vu again, am I right? I got to take this. Okay. Good night. It's my hotline. Seven time McCurdy Award. To the Tarmac speaking. Hello. <laughs> Yes, I would like to purchase the extended warranty on my Infiniti G37 and the 97 Miata. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you, too, Brian. What was that? Brian, I can't hear you. You keep mumbling. <laughs> yeah, it's quite obvious you've never made it this far in this sales pitch before. <laughs> <laughs> You're still mumbling, Brian. C control yourself. <laughs> you call yourself a cold caller? You should be ashamed. <laughs> Who trained you? Oh. My six-year-old niece, Samantha, could do a better job closing this deal than you. <laughs> hey, hang tight. I'm not done with you, Brian. Hang tight. Bob, Tom, <laughs> i got to hop off here and help this green horn out. Yeah. Then I can talk him into flight school. Hey, let's reload for tomorrow on the next deal. We just landed. Oh, sounds Thanks. good. All right. Thank Thanks. you Thanks, very much. Thanks, Kenny. Wow. I've heard of those uh, those rock and roll tours where they have the hologram, but Zig Ziglar, hologram. Yeah, how about that? Well, yeah. That's going to draw the sales guys to the convention. <laughs> sure that's going to be the, that's going to be delightful. Uh, I want to mention a couple quick things. We've got um, some uh, boys on the road here. It looks like if I'm if I'm if I'm reading this right, the Funny Bone in Syracuse, New York, is going to be the home of uh, Greg Warren this weekend. That's right. Starting tomorrow night. That'll be great. We'll look forward to seeing uh, Greg um, uh, coming up on Monday, I believe. Uh, Willie G is going to be at the Pivot Brewing Company in Lexington, Kentucky, for a free show with Jeff Oske and David Brooks coming up Saturday, June 18th. Yeah, come out, reserve some tickets in my Instagram bio. There's a link there. Going to be fun. You guys are also going to be at the famous Irving Theater Friday, June 17th. Patty G will be there. I'll be there. Chick will be there. Ace making a very rare appearance. Did uh, you get my rider? Uh, yeah, I got your rider. <laughs> I'll be there. Uh, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't finished. I was interrupted by Ace. He <laughs> was getting to your the headliner. So no, you... no, Pat Collins. Oh. Uh, yeah, Josh never... recording his new live album. Better get a good crowd. Yikes. Um, <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> well, you are Mr. Positive, aren't you? We can, we can fix it in post. Uh, let's see, where else was I? Oh, oh uh, Saturday, uh, June 11th. The Dam Theater in Osgood, Indiana. It's spelled. D is that correct? D A M M. Cool. I'm going to the dam. dam. I'm going to the Dam Theater. Yeah. Well, there's another damn opera. Dam. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> that damn movie wasn't any good. Go see the damn Yankees. <laughs> now, Willie, you were telling me that you saw uh, Top Gun, the new one. This is great. Yeah, it's fun. And my call sign's Pork Chop. I want everyone to call me Pork Chop. Oh, I like Pork cool. Chop. That's yeah, cute. Thanks. I like Pork Chops. That's yeah. why I'm Pork Chop. It's a really, it's a really fun movie. I had a total blast watching it. It's Tom Cruise is great. Yeah. But you know what's funny about that movie? John Hamm, one of the most handsome men on earth, yes. right? Next to Tom Cruise, he is this weird, awkward oaf. It is absolutely insane You're right. how hot Tom what? Cruise is. You think John Hamm lost some handsomeness because he's standing next to Tom Cruise, Christy? In that movie, he Little is a bit. boring nerd. Well, his character. That's Cruise. a good actor. Yeah. It is but just, just relative to Tom Cruise. I mean, I can't even imagine how I would look next to that guy. If John Hamm is a boring nerd. Tall. Oh, tall. Sure. Yeah, tall. Yeah, he's, he's a little man. <laughs> but uh, John Hamm, of course, is famous for the Hamaconda. Yes. Do you think Tom Cruise, is, he's probably got a little cannon in there, too, right? Uh, no, if he did, we'd know about know. it. Those are all kinds of stunts. No, it's Scientology. Can't talk about it. Well, how tall is he? Five, five, quiet. Josh? I don't know. Tom Cruise? I honestly don't know. He's but, uh, short. Doesn't matter. He's, he's, he's a terrific actor. Great he hasn't actor. aged at all. And he's got the Dick Clark gene. He's a badass, man. Doing all those stunts. Yeah, wow. Well, well I, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm looking forward. You've all you've seen it, Christy? Yep. Okay. It's okay. a really fun I'll probably summer see block. It again. Try to get to it this try to get to it this weekend. Uh now, uh, we uh, turn back to the uh, to the news desk. What's happening over there? A Scottish cop was left stunned as he was greeted by an alpaca sitting inside the front seat of a car hmm. as he pulled over the black car traveling along the interstate, not the interstate, but a, along a highway. They do a random inspection apparently in Scotland to make sure that your car they do um Remember, we used to have to do inspections and have a sticker. Well, it depends. They had certain states had, they had uh, safety inspections. They had yeah, uh, and so they do this. Tests. Yeah, they yeah. do this in Scotland. Apparently, it's called Operation Scrutinize. They found some defects on the car, but the cop was more surprised to see an alpaca sitting in the passenger seat of the vehicle. Can those things be toilet trained? Apparently, this one <laughs> is Annie. She lives. I in mean, the, come on. 
She lives on the Dennis Burris farm along with 75 other alpacas, but she thinks she's like the family dog. <laughs> <laughs> he found her as a... Um, a orphan. Her mother had rejected her a couple of years Little ago. Little Orphan Annie? Little Orphan Annie. That's exactly where she got her name. She became oh, part of the family. Well, at night they call her Little Annie Fanny. <laughs> you know, Fanny over there. You know, the first porno I ever saw, I'm not making it up, Little Often Annie. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Yeah, oh, nice. Mm -hmm. This little alpaca apparently acts more like a domesticated dog roaming around the house, jumping in the car for road trips, eating with the family dogs. She doesn't think she's one of the herd. Isn't that sweet? First porno book I was ever handed was called Diary of a London Lady. Oh, God. <laughs> a porno book? Yeah. Who handed you a porno book? It was His father. It was, it, was, it, was, it was in uh, Mr. Manley's English class. Mr. Manley. Oh. It's really. Yeah. Worse. It was early erotica. Wait, your teacher had it or one of your buddies? No, no, no. It was the English class. It was so boring. Someone said, hey, look, instead, instead, of, reading, out. instead mm. of reading Beowulf, check so this out. So he did not give you the book to read as a class assignment. No, Mr. Mr. Manley was a fine teacher. Tom, you and I should sit down and just kind of just for uh, a select few, come up with some of literature's best porn parodies. Like a separate piece of ass. Oh, that was a classic by John Knowles. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> Some of them are just crass, like <laughs> war, <laughs> regid ass. You know, war. Yeah, yeah, they didn't really put too much in there. Yeah, yeah. A catcher in the crack. You know, war in a little not, piece. Not subtle. War in a little piece. I've got, I've got, an, I've got a really good idea. Dress as a pilot. Go to the airport. Yes. And carry around a copy of the book Flying for Dummies. <laughs> and, That'd be hard. And, and walk around looking like, uh, how do these gates work? <laughs> that's that's supposed to be at a plane. Yeah, exactly. Sit down, crack oh. open a tall boy. <laughs> <laughs> Have the wings, the whole thing. Well, you know, March 2020, I was a regular accountant. Then these Zoom flying classes come out, and I thought I'd give it a shot. This is day one. He's vaping. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, uh, what, what else is In going Florida, on? Uh, um, there's, Floridians are saying a man was bitten by an alligator. That's not so unusual. Although in this particular case, the guy mistook it for a dog. Wow. WTSP. Where news comes... By the teaspoon. By the teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. How dumb do you have to be to... Not Sarasota, County, Sarasota County Police responded to the Warm Mineral Springs Motel, where the victim told investigators he was walking outside at night, spotted a dark figure moving along the bushes. A sheriff's office spokesperson said the man, quote, stated the figure appeared to look like a dog with a long leash, which or, is why he wasn't Or an al eight-foot alligator with a tail. <laughs> ...to move out of the way. <laughs> the animal, which turned out to be an alligator, bit the man right at his bright leg, ripping off a chunk of muscle as he tried to get away. Oh. He was taken to Sarasota Memorial Hospital for treatment. Sergeant James... <laughs> what are the odds? Achille... Managed... What? <laughs> <laughs> And managed to capture the gator before a licensed trapper arrived to remove the reptile from the area. Yeah. Do they post this guy's uh, BAC? Yeah. No, they did not on here, but. Or are his sunglasses and cane all right? I think the Warm Mineral Springs Motel speaks volumes yeah, in and of itself. Have, maybe they have a bar there. Yeah. Now, what's the rule? You're supposed to let the gator sniff your hand before you... Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You know, hold on. You, you, don't, you, don't, you, you don't splay your fingers, right? Right, yeah. You, you want to get down to its level as well. Show the gator yeah. your fist. And if they're mm -hmm. fighting, don't do anything. You have to stick your finger in their backside. I okay. That's yeah, right. is true. Oh. Of course, yeah. Make some release. So this guy thought was what he thought it was like a nine-foot dachshund. <laughs> 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 who in, With a leash. Especially in Florida. My God, who would... Oh, there seems to be a critter there. I wonder if it's a deadly snake or gator. I'll pet it. Yeah. I, yeah I he was know. staying at a motel? Yeah. Nice. See? That's, yeah, again. Yeah. It was probably going after the Crocs he was wearing. Oh! <laughs> uh -uh. Thought the dog was a Crocker Spaniel. Oh, oh no. Boy, I haven't cared for these. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a Crocapoo. Oh, no. Well, thank you very much. The puns are the weird shame of people that use <laughs> motels. <laughs> this, could be, this could be a cover for the couple of times this guy's inadvertently picked up a trans prostitute. I don't know what that was. I mean, um, I don't know why that was going to be the one that was going to be home run. I don't know. I don't know you thought that was going to be the cure. I, I, I swear to God, I thought it was a woman. I, 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 swear, I swear to God, I thought it was a, thought it was a dog and it was an alligator. I, I'm having trouble distinguishing things. I thought it was a car and it was 
a duck. Oh. Uh, you think Gator would be a cute name for a dog? Come here, yes. Gator. Yeah, it There's is. a tiny little puppy running over. Oh, yeah. That'd be a great yeah. name for a dog. Cool. I thought you were going to say for a kid. I did, too. <laughs> well, oh, I guarantee wait. in Louisiana they got a kid named Gator. Oh, yeah. That'd be a great nickname for a kid. That is well, sure. a nickname for sure. He's got spiky hair and hey, a mole in the back. We, yeah. Have, yeah. we have a great news story about giving kids names. Oh, yeah. really? Well, we have one more alligator story real quick. Okay. Um, an alligator was found loose in West Texas, far from its natural habitat. Midland County Sheriff's deputies responded to the Airline Mobile Home and RV Park in Midland for a mm. report of an alligator on the property. Oh, I bet it was a pet. The reptile, which was under the complainant's car, was taken into custody. Sheriff's officials said the alligator will be in the care of Dr. Tommy Wilson with A to Z Veterinary until it's released to a game warden. Doesn't say how long it is, but I bet you're right. I'm Wait sure a it was a pet. Where was it? In a trailer park. Midland, Texas. Oh, that's going to be one nice pair of cowboy boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in West Texas. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I wouldn't be... Uh, uh, don't worry, man. We'll take care of yeah, this. We'll relocate that <laughs> to my closet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they even make a nice belt, too. <laughs> um, well, that's that's a sweet story. They've rescued the alligator. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, be careful out there. Do we have time <laughs> for this name? This sort of story is so fantastic. About IKEA me. Norway is offering to help parents name their newborns following mm -hmm. a COVID baby boom. The company's branch noted that while retailers saw, quote, both a shortage of raw materials and challenges with delivery times during the pandemic, there is at least no shortage of new children in Norway. The Scandinavian country registered 56,060 births last year. That's 3,081 more than in 2020. IKEA Norway has since built a name bank with more than 800 listings, which are drawn from ones IKEA has given to its furniture uh. since 1948. The retailer said after all these years, IKEA has built up a large catalog to pick from. I'd like you to meet my daughter, L-shaped sofa. Uh, I don't understand. This is my son, Alan Wrench. <laughs> uh, uh, and we, we were going to name him Meatballs uh, because <laughs> those are delicious. But it turned out <laughs> she's a girl. <laughs> Christy, did it say, do they give you the whole name or do they just give you the letters and you have to figure out the order yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I, who would do this? Name your uh, own child. Well, oh, there's all know. kinds of service. Remember we had this, this, the story of the place you pay them $5,000? Yeah. You, Name your kid. Doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> uh, at uh, all. I mean, uh, does I, what are the names of the IKEA furniture that would be? They're weird, aren't they? Or yeah. aren't, uh, not weird, but they're Swedish. Yeah, it's yes. like Flergsian. Oh, uh, this whole like th this whole name bank is in. I can't read it because it's in Swedish. Well, so. give it your best. Well, what do you got? Snurd and flirt. You could do like you could do uh, you know, like uh, you could do Ottoman. Call the kid Otto. Okay, here you <laughs> that's go. That's not bad. I've always liked the name Otto. Aladdin is on here. Ada, that's an e Amadeus. 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 Hammock. Um, <laughs> How about Hammock? Bruno. Oh, oh, Billy. They have a chair named Billy. Okay. Shelving. Don't sit on Billy. Don't. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. Yeah. Um, some of these are pretty normal. Camilla, Cornelia, Cyril. Um, they have. They I have like Cyril. That's they, the name from uh, Breaking ba Breaking Away. Mm -hmm. They have a chair called Diana. They have a. <laughs> well, see now they're so they've they've named their furniture after named people names. So over I see. the years, okay, I see. yes. I oh. bought one of those Diana chairs, but yeah. uh, got yeah. into a wreck going through a tunnel. And, uh, <laughs> really? Couldn't really piece it back together. Oh, no. It's on top of the car. <laughs> So. Should have put a seatbelt in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should uh, name kids after board games. Yeah, yeah like what? Sorry? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I name one of my kids. Uh, boggle. What, I don't know. Mousetrap. Uh, Mousetrap. Did I, did I hear correctly that people are now naming their kids after game of games of Game, game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. Oh, I'm oh, sure yeah. they are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we had a couple of our chickens named after Game of Thrones characters. What'd you name them? Uh, well, Daenerys was the head, the head uh, hen, and uh, what was the other one? Like, I don't know. My girlfriend likes that. My, my friend named uh, tw their twins after two Game of Thrones characters. Really? Yeah. Dragon and that midget guy. <laughs> that seems like an insensitive... Yeah, I, I thought, uh, yeah, why not go for characters, but... Uh... <laughs> We've all talked about this before. Naming kids is tricky. It's hard. Did you have trouble? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. The second one. The first I, one. I saved her from one. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I was going to name my oldest daughter Claire Marie. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Well, when you put it with my last name. At the time. At the oh, time. okay, yeah. It, it sounded, sounded like, like, a, a, like a breath mint. A sore throat lozenge, <laughs> to, I think, is what Tom said. Without giving much away, but... Yeah, mm -hmm. so she ended up being Ava, but that worked and out she well. she is Ava. Yeah, That's the perfect Ava. name for her. Yeah, and then your other child, of course, Beva. Yep. <laughs> What's her OnlyFans name? Does she go by Ava? I don't know. You'd have to ask her. <laughs> Willie? Uh, Ava <laughs> Misbehava? No comment. <laughs> Ava <laughs> Misbehava? Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Ava <laughs> Misbehava is fine. Ava Crava. Uh, <laughs> That's good, too. <laughs> this is your daughter, Christine. Yeah, I <laughs> your wow, I can't believe you're talking about, about it that this. way. Thanks, guys. Okay, if a day keeps the doc away. That's mm. So I, I have a question. These the Ikea is offering the, to name your kid. Are these all Swedish names, or do they have the English? No, they're they're all... they're. The, like a Diana is a okay. normal name. I mean, oh, they have okay. normal names, but then they had like Frode was one. Frode. Frode. Lovely. <laughs> Frode. I went to a school with a kid. They, his nick, everyone called him Durf. 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 His name was Fred. And every, he that was he, oh, he he wanted to be called Durf. I kind of oh. like that. That's kind of funny. I thought it was really cool yeah. too. Didn't Fred Durf, uh, lead singer of Limp Bizkit? <laughs> one of those days. <laughs> um, What's well, Durf? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's a cool idea to name your kids after furniture. After, after furniture? furniture. You're like Johnny Bench. <laughs> he did okay. He's a great, great athlete. <laughs> Andrea Couch. <laughs> We're going to come back, I, I hope. Um, we have, actually, couches in the news that um, you'd want this couch. Yeah, you would. Trust me. Uh, that's coming up. Plus, we have, is there a shortage of something at KFC? We got a moose that's loose. We got cockroaches that are loose. Oh, jeez. <sighs> a zebra that's loose. And a weird story about fake urine. Hmm. Huh. Uh -huh. Uh, you'll be surprised what people want fake urine for when we come back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out the Bob and Tom Show on Facebook. Get the link at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. got some extra from the Bob and Tom show. Are you a computer geek? No, no. I see I didn't grow up with computers. Mm -hmm. That's why children have the advantage. They slip out the womb. They're born with a password. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you look yeah. at the ultrasound, you see the sex of the childhood's internet provider is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're an email guy then. Oh, no, no. Well, I check my email. I never get real emails. They're all junk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a junk box, and the junk box is like, look, we don't even have time to sort out this stuff. And it's all that burn DVDs, lose weight, consolidate debt, and then be like young teen sluts, whores, <laughs> Thousands of it. And then I got a weird one in the middle that says, do you need a birdhouse? <laughs> <laughs> and I, was, I actually got that. I'm like, who's the birdhouse guy? And then every day I get this email. Jim, do you want to enlarge your penis? Yep. And I, and how did I get on the small willy email list? That is the real thing. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Mark Sweeney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, the Bob and Tom show can be seen if you'd like to watch it. We have a live video feed for you, bobandtom.com forward slash live. It's that simple. Click on the link. Next thing you know, 
You're watching the Bob and Tom live video feed. Cameras in the studio. We switch back and forth. Usually Jeff Oske is behind the scenes taking care of that, but today he is on mic sitting in for our own Chick McGee. If you haven't heard, he had gallbladder surgery. That's right, but he is recovering and doing great, and we expect him back in the sports desk chair come Monday. But Jeff Oske is sitting in today, and we thank him for getting up, coming in, and getting into the sports chair for Chick McGee. Al Jackson and Brian Dunkelman on a Thursday on the way right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News Update. The widow of Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins is making her first public statement since his death as the band has announced two concerts in his memory. Allison Hawkins thanked fans for the outpouring of love after his death in March. Meanwhile, the Foo Fighters are planning to hold tribute concerts September 3rd in London and September 27th outside Los Angeles. The lineups will be announced later. Most of the audio history of the band Blondie has been sitting in guitarist Chris Stein's barn in Woodstock, New York, for nearly two decades. They sorted through 100 reel-to-reel -reel tapes, half a dozen cassettes and various stuff that included dressing room signs and an Andy Warhol print to create the upcoming Blondie boxed set against the odds 1974 to 1982. 36 of the 124 tracks have never been released before. It will come out on August 26th. The Jennifer Lopez documentary Halftime kicked off the 21st Tribeca Festival yesterday, launching the annual New York event with an intimate behind-the-scenes portrait of the singer-actor filmed during the tumultuous year she turned 50, co-headlined the Super Bowl and narrowly missed out as an Oscar nomination. A star-studded and musical premiere at the United Palace in Washington Heights served as an appropriate opener for the Tribeca Festival. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, Shooter, it's Kenny Tarmac. Hey, we just landed. I'm an ORD just got in from TPA through ATL. And hey, guess what else just landed? The Bob and Tom app. I know, I know. Now, thanks to the Bob and Tom app, even if I have to go all the way from Foxtrot 20 down to Alpha 4, I can still listen live, see their videos, find an affiliate station, use the alarm, and even send a message. This is Kenny Tarmac signing off and reminding you, everything I touch turns to sold. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> You're so weird. You have no idea. Essential Morning Radio. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. In the studio with us, comedian Mike McRae. I understand you're a big Indiana Jones guy. Is that correct? Uh, oh, yeah. That's my favorite movie series ever, man. Mm -hmm. And th those movies are always like, when I went to college, I would watch those all the time. I'd be like, like that would be the professor to have sure. for any kind of class. Because he just... Every you know every semester he just you know takes off for three or four weeks to save the world or yep. find some Inca staff in Peru or something you know, like he walks into the first day. All right, class. My name is Doctor Indiana Jones. I'll be your professor for archaeology 101. You know his dad busts in the door. Junior, <laughs> dad, I'm teaching class here. Junior, there's no time. We're almost on. He's about to uncover the sword of destiny in a vandalic horde in Tunisia. <laughs> Look, I can't just go chasing after some sword all the time. It's not just any sword, Junior. It's Balmung. Balmung. The legendary sword of Siegfried. <laughs> Bestowed by his widow upon Theodoric the Ostrogoth before the slaughter of the Burgundians. <laughs> and then lost for a thousand years. The class is like, I don't know what he's talking about, but yeah, go find it. Go save the world. We'll be here when you get back. We'll be at the bar or the speakeasy or whatever they had back then. You know? be perfect. Class is parting afterwards. Hey, man, what did I tell you every semester? Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom, twenty four seven, twenty four seven, twenty four seven. Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you're listening to Bob and Tom, twenty four seven. Which begs the question: Why do you need Bob and Tom, twenty four seven? Oh my gosh, Any it's day me. Now. Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I just I'm enjoying the bass over there. I really, I really was nice. And in my head, I was even like, why is the chick talking? <laughs> 
This is the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee, how the heck are you? I'm great, Josh. Thanks for asking. You're very well. Thanks for being here and My loving us. My pleasure. I love uh, all of you. Unconditional. Yep. Hey, sure. Godwin, speaking of unconditional. Um, yes. What does that mean? <laughs> He didn't use any conditioner in his hair. <laughs> I don't need to. No. <laughs> it's no you know what? <laughs> Nor do I. <laughs> Jeff Oskey sitting in for Chick McGee today. That's right. Chick's healing up very nicely. And the condition for your hair and mine and Josh would be MIA. <laughs> Ace Cosby threatening to do a repeat of his joke of the day. We'll see if that actually happens. <laughs> Willie Griswold over there. Hey, man. And Tom... Sitting at the uh, captain's helm, uh, proudly, and uh, the helm filled... would be enough. Uh, by definition, the captain would be there, would he not? Is there like a uh, a yeoman's helm? A yeoman's <laughs> helm? I, I don't know. Uh, uh, just going through some of the overnights. A lot of mail. Uh, how's Chick? They're asking. Chick had his gallbladder taken out um, in, in yesterday evening. He's doing great. He thinks he'll be back by Monday. Yeah. And I'm not sure what kind of. Uh, Post uh, gallbladder removal diet or anything he has to be on, but he'll, I'm sure he will. He'll, we'll, we'll find out from him. I, I guess it was full of stones. Apparently, yeah. yeah. And and the doctor told him it probably hadn't been functioning properly for several years. God bless him. Now the gallbladder is what an offshoot of the liver. Correct? Yes. Okay. Um, probably means no alcohol for Jake. Mm. Um, and you're 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 getting you're laughing a you're lot getting about that. You're getting a lot of joy out of uh, <laughs> him not being able to partake. What? No, I'm concerned. Uh, he'll, he'll be just fine. Why? Um, <laughs> now uh, we have, uh, but he's doing fine. In case you were wondering. Yes. Oh, but he does. So he'd be answering the phone on time. Well, uh, hello, Bob and Tom show. <laughs> oh. Hey. It's the old skipper, Captain Dave, calling you. At, at the helm, I'm guessing. How are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm calling to remind you that since it's June now, we've gone to our summer outfits aboard the Chum Dumpster. Oh, nice. What are you wearing? Yeah, so consider yourself warned, okay? Look, it gets hot out here with the sun glinting off the water like a two-bit whore flashing a gold tooth at a prospective customer. Wow. So the crew likes to peel down a little. But, of course, some uptight passengers get squeamish when they climb aboard and see the scuzzy, bony, scab-riddled crew members. Oh, yeah, the boys like wearing Daisy Duke shorts and man thongs. Oh, Fishnet bodysuits and crop tops with assless chaps. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Josh. The way you dress. Yeah. And if you're like me, nothing cools you down quicker than wearing crotchless culottes. Yeah, I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wear them each summer up until Labor Day, and that's when I switch to my crotchless corduroys. Oh, oh, no, nice. <laughs> that way they don't chafe. Hey, uh, we dress for comfort, not style here on the Chum Dumpster. Yes, that does mean there's a lots of exposed, pasty, scaly skin. <laughs> you can even tell which of the crew members has scurvy, mm. scalies, or <laughs> rickets. Oh, spoil alert, it's all of them. I see. <laughs> When you dress like that, lots of missing body parts suddenly come into vivid focus. A fully dressed one-leg man isn't even noticeable after a while. But you put that same man in a speedo bulge enhancing like repeater pouch, and things take a disturbing <laughs> turn. We've got more moose knuckles than a bullwinkle lookalike contest. <laughs> That's right, and since none of us have time for manscaping, count on seeing lots of scraggly, weird old man hairs. Oh, yeah, come growing on. in unexpected places. I think we hit a whale there. Wait a minute. <laughs> then you got your ragged scars, lesions, open sores, a medley of cankers. Oh. <laughs> Squishy, pus filled boils. Oh, oh, we get the idea. Come ball. on. It all makes it hard to keep your cheese sandwich down. Sick. But as a reminder, no refunds. While some people say there's no shame in the human body, yeah, those are idiots that never took a summer cruise on the Chum Dumpster. <laughs> we've had, look, we've had lifelong nudists walk off our boat to become Mennonites. <laughs> we are not attractive men, no. I'm warning you. 
But for those of you that got a cast iron gut or are legally blind, <laughs> sign up for our summer cruise right now. That's an order from your captain, Captain Dave, here aboard the Chum Dumpster. <laughs> Goodbye, pussy. Thank you. Aye, aye, Captain. I've, I've never heard of a like repeater pouch. I have not. Oh, who knew? I don't think I want to find out what that is. Wow. Uh, crotchless Daisy Dukes. What the hell is going no, on thanks. on that ship? Uh, let's see, where were we? Oh, we were talking with Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. What have we missed? He did mention moose knuckles. We have a moose on the loose. We do. Yeah, in Colorado, they're warning people not to take selfies with a moose on the loose near the town of Erie, Colorado. According to police, they were told to keep a safe distance further than you would think is safe if you encounter the animal and to please, please, please stop taking selfies with wildlife. By the way, can I interrupt for just a second? Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, Mr. Godwin. Did you just ask has, to interrupt uh, me? <laughs> wow. Yes. Now, if you could shut it up, I could get my point out. <laughs> trying to be polite here. Uh, Pat has, uh, is famous for having hit a number of deer in his yes. career as a driver. Yeah, two in one year. This morning, driving in, uh, I was right behind Pat, and um, Pat missed a deer in the driveway by maybe two feet. Yeah. How funny would that have oh, been, that been oh, if you hit a deer in the driveway that of this thing, building? That thing was flying. Uh, yeah, it came, came jumping out of the you woods. Know, she was out there yesterday, too. She, you'd think she'd learn her lesson. Don't hang out in the driveway. Well, let's, I tell you what, why don't we find out about this moose on the loose okay. when we come back? Sure. Uh, and we have uh, some other fascinating animal stuff coming up in the show, yes. including a bear breaking into a car for a specific reason. We've got cockroaches on the loose. And zebras hmm. yes. on the loose in Santa Barbara? <laughs> Wow. Santa wow. Barbara. Yes. That's, well, zebra's half black, half white. That's, that's very unusual for Santa Barbara, I'll tell you what. Wow. <clears throat> I don't know what that was. Okay. <laughs> the truth is why to ignore that. <laughs> Let's see, there's Oprah and then, uh, okay. Uh, no, we'll, we'll be right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Keep us with you at all times. Get the Bob and Tom app now at your app store. State law. Listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. <laughs> Essential Morning Radio. This is Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. 24 7. Hey, when he's not uh, calling in to get Tom a little more hip with a quiz, Al Jackson can be caught on the 
nationally syndicated daytime talk show Daily Blast Live, where he is one of the co-hosts. He's also the author of a children's book, Where Is Baby Ford? Available at aljacksonlive.com. That's our West Coast Mountain correspondent. He's a comedian, he's a TV host, and he helps Tom to get a little more hip. Al Jackson joining us on a Thursday. And in the 9 o'clock hour, comedian Brian Dunkelman going to be joining us, catching up with Brian. He's got a new documentary out on Amazon Prime Video, Dunkelman, and we'll be talking all about that with Brian coming up right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with Things You May Have Missed. Olympic gold medalist Simone Biles and dozens of other women who say they were sexually assaulted by Larry Nassar are seeking more than $1 billion from the FBI for failing to stop the sports doctor. No dispute, FBI agents in 2015 knew Nassar accused of assaulting gymnasts, but the agents failed to act, leaving the doctor free to continue targeting young women and girls. For more than a year, individual lawsuits could follow the tort claims filed on Wednesday. Claimants include Biles, Ali Reisman, and Michaela Maroney, all Olympic gold medalists. An email seeking comment sent to the FBI. Remarks to Congress last year, FBI Director Christopher Wray acknowledged there were major mistakes. In other things you may have missed, it's now legal to cultivate and possess marijuana in Thailand. But the country still discourages smoking pot and getting high. Products containing more than a tiny amount of THC, the chemical that makes people high, still illegal in that country. The government is warning those eager to light up for fun that smoking in public could still be considered a nuisance subject to jail and fines. Thailand mainly wants to make a splash in the market for medical marijuana. It already has a well-developed medical tourism industry and its tropical climate ideal for growing cannabis. The country's public health minister plans to begin distributing one million marijuana seedlings for cultivation across the country on Friday. And that's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? They don't say we didn't warn you. Oh, my God! There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Brand new feature, Biff Whiskey, Frontier Lifeguard. As told by Arnie Whiskey, Frontier Golfer. I should have known. Well, you know, I was a, was a man about town and... Also at the uh, Whiskeyville Country Club and Salad Bar. Of course, the country club, we have our very own swimming pool. And, of course, we had to have a lifeguard for the youngsters there. Well, we hired a young fellow named Biff Whiskey. And he was the lifeguard, pool, you know, at the pool. Well, this young fellow walks up to Biff and he goes, Excuse me, Biff, but uh, what's the best way to teach a girl to swim? And Biff says, Come here, young fella. He goes, now here's how it's done. First, you walk her slowly into the water. All right. Mm -hmm. Then you put your arms gently around her waist. Then you uh, rub your hands delicately up and down her arms. Mm -hmm. Then you just kind of lean over and softly kiss her on the neck. The young fellow says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm teaching my sister. He goes, on that case, just push her in the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> Except in Kentucky. <laughs> Jeez. I knew I should have held my uh, ears yeah. for that. <laughs> Thus concludes <laughs> another A exciting quick episode. episode of Biff, Biff Whiskey, Frontier, Frontier Lifeguard. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bob and Tom. They put the F in professional. Hi, this is comedian Rob. Blue Bear. Hey, it's the Bob and Tom Show. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Josh. Willie Griswold over there. Hey, uh, man. Yucking it up. Ace Cosby hey. running the board. Jeff Oske sitting in for Chick McGee. That's right. The lovely, the talented, the incomparable. Tom Griswold over hey, at the right. house. Yes. And Christy Lee is Thank here. You, Josh. <laughs> well, when you say Ace is running That's the board. Wonderful. Yeah. It doesn't mean that he's um, he's 
winning jo- jogging and board. Well, no, that's not what I. He's he's actually at the. He's, uh, he's our engineer. Engineer board, yeah. And handling the controls over there. I mean, we can. I could do a classic I, Tom Griswold intro. Uh, let's do this by uh, shoe size. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, let's see, uh, let me see all of your feet. And, uh, What's your, oh, we're, we have what, to Mr. Oscar, your shoe size? I oh, jeez. I'm a ten and a half. Are you an ace? Right? Really? Like we're ten and a half and eleven. So. Yeah, mm. uh, eleven and all bird. Okay, all right, very good, very good. Uh, Let's uh, move forward. You know, we were discussing this moose on the loose. Is that correct? Yes, in Colorado, the officials there are warning people not to take selfies with a moose on the loose near the town of Erie, Colorado. Christy, this doesn't sound like a moose on a loose to me. It sounds like there's a moose. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. They're wild animals. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. People are stupid enough to try to get selfies with them, and they... Yeah, police are telling folks to keep a safe distance further than you would think is safe. Right. If you encounter the animal and to please, please, please stop trying to take selfies with wildlife. You know, the phrase loose moose mm-hmm. is um, uh, a slang term for what uh, Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp's bed. Gave him the old, gave him the old loose yeah, moose. Gave him the old loose moose. <laughs> yeah. And then the Chicago oh, sunroof. <laughs> I thought that was the loose deuce. <laughs> oh, maybe I read it little wrong. Do, little loose deuce. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Residents are also asked to keep their dogs leashed while the moose is still in the area. Oh, it'll stomp them. Today. Officials posted a Facebook <laughs> video of the moose walking down a road <laughs> and wrote, quote, Ideally, the moose will bed down for the evening, which will allow Colorado Parks and Wildlife to do what they do best. What Slaughter do they do moose. Best? <laughs> Shoot it? What the hell? Yeah. That's it? I'll we'll take care of it. That's it? Have you seen the video of the... Um uh, it's the a bison, and the people are in their car, and their dog jumps out the car window. No, no. It was this was big a couple of weeks ago, and this dog runs up the, the bison. The bison goes, moves its, flips its head like this, and the dog goes flying. And the dog's fine. The dog's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, you don't want to have your uh, dogs attacking a giant bison or a moose. Moose can be very big. Yeah, moose are very big. They I, are. I okay. hate though when they t- uh, don't take a selfie with a bear, like. <laughs> I'm You're, with you. Yeah. Or like, do. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, here's the next headline. Don't try to take a selfie with a hell's angel. Like, they get upset. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> Natural selection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that people, like, there's so many, like, like Tiger King and all that stuff. There's, like, those animal, like, Instagram accounts where guys are, like, petting tigers. And I think people see that and they go, oh, I want to take a selfie with the moose. Yeah. Not no one can get hurt. Yeah, this one's a badass. Yeah, why's that? Oh, my God. Have you seen his nickname? No. no. What is it? Mussolini. <laughs> oh, boy. It's a, a fascist. <laughs> yeah, He's got leather boots on. It's, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> so the, I, but I do like the fact that you've got the rhyme there, loose moose. Mm-hmm. Loose moose. Willie, you follow a lot of accounts where, on Instagram where guys are... Uh, I do. ...petting tigers? Uh, well, is that is that a crime? Perhaps, uh, perhaps shirtless. Is that is that a crime? Uh, that what? I like to watch a, a guy with, with nice abs petting a little tiger cub. Is that an issue? Not a crime. Oh. That, oh. I like to watch JC and the fellas having a good time. <laughs> petting the wild cats. Pat, you got something going over there? Kenny Loggins. Here we, here we go. <laughs> the cops are trying all day to catch a moose on the highway. <laughs> Telling the public Put down your phone, leave that poor moose alone. <laughs> Car parks and wildlife, they'll try and knock him down. down. Protect this big guy from the tourists and the sleepy town. Tonight we gotta catch a moose, a moose loose. <laughs> there by the deer and goose. <laughs> Don't say cheese, taking the moose selfie. Yeah. Stand way back, or he'll kick you in the sack. Oh, get the knock, cow juice. Everybody run moose loose. Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> enough of that. Hey, hey, enough of that hey, silliness. Uh, I it. Get that hokum out of here. <laughs> loose moose also sounds like it could be a, a, the name of a DJ. Yeah, good evening. This is the Loose Moose. Oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. play a long one now. Cause, uh, uh, <laughs> no, come on. I got a loose one. Just because it rhymes with deuce. I'm about, about to, to be the Sluice Moose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one loose moose. Silly boys. <laughs> Stairway to heaven. Do we, hey, do, do, this is a totally inside radio thing. They used Whenever someone would get fired, 
It would always be, uh, hey, did you about the loose moose? Yeah, he got axed. He's on the beach. Yeah. On the beach. Oh, on sure. Beach. That was the big thing. Is that true in other businesses? Yeah, no, a yeah. lot of times with sports, when a team is eliminated from right. the playoffs, you'll hear, well, they've got a tea time tomorrow. Ah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Or, yeah, they're heading to the golf course or the right. beach. Yeah, the big thing in radio, hey, he's on the beach. Yeah. Yep. Sad <laughs> <laughs> so thing is, nobody's on the beach when they get fired. <laughs> yeah, you're to be on the beach, right? Uh, this weekend, right? Oh, uh, yeah, essentially. I'll be on the lake. All right. So well, they have the a banks. beach there, right? They do have beaches there, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, I no, won't. I, I, I just want—I brought this up for a reason. Yeah. Josh is going to Lake of the Ozarks, going to go fishing with one of his brothers. Yeah. But kind of a family reunion. You're going to see your mom. Yes, it's been a couple you got, years. You have a nice gift. We're not—we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> but um, we have a request. <laughs> oh yeah. Coming up uh, in a f- few minutes um, for a special tribute song to one of uh, Josh's fishing yes. adventures. Oh. Um, it's a song called Aqua Dump. Oh, come on. Uh, I, I'm not, I, I, I don't control the incoming mail. All right. If, if, if you want to mail, let's just go to uh, Bob and Tom at uh, bobandtom.com. Hey, Josh, oh. I have a question real quick. Yeah. If I got you an FBI female body inspector hat, would you wear it to the lake this weekend? Well, what would I do with the one that I currently own? <laughs> <laughs> Your brother could wear it. You could have matching hats. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, if you are a VIP member of the Bob and Tom, oh, you know something? I just thought of something. What? We have, I forgot about this. We have a special VIP thing going. If you want to join the Bob and Tom VIP and give it away as a special Father's Day gift. Oh, see, the gift that keeps on giving. It's out there. Yeah. yeah. Check, there's some cool stuff in the VIP. You can also uh, do dedications and uh, and uh, listen to the show whenever you want. So get the details on that. But yeah, coming up, we'll do a little bit of Aqua Dump by, by special request. All right. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I should once again update everybody. Chick's doing fine. He had... Uh, um, unexpectedly uh, gallbladder issues and had his gallbladder removed yesterday evening. And I was I heard that the doctor that's done this has done this surgery almost 5,000 times. So this fellow knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. Did a good job, and I guess uh, Chick's gallbladder was rather large and had a lot of stones in it, and apparently the doctor said that he, it had not been functioning properly for years. So. Yeah. Glad he got that gut rid of Yes. That. Should be back five. on Monday, theoretically. We love you, Chicky. 5,000. Five think about that. 5,000 what? Successful times? 5,000. Uh, well, they didn't go yeah. into the details. Yeah, you're right. It well, 5,000, after you're just going through the motions right. after a certain point. Probably do it you know, a blind you sleep. They could have done a drunk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> None of these things are true. They probably was drunk. Yeah. Physician. Let's no. just move, let's oh, just move forward here. Uh, Christy Lee, what have we missed over there? Uh, there have been multiple zebra sightings in Santa Barbara, California. Mr. Marco Chavez said he unexpectedly... Oh, Marco Chavez. Uh, unexpectedly encountered the animal on a recent bike ride on West Camino Cielo. He told Newshawk that while cars on the road had stopped. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's a Newshawk? N O O Z H A W K. Newshawk. Newshawk. <laughs> that while cars on the road had stopped, they were protected by their vehicles. Chavez said, as soon as I rolled up, though, the zebra saw me and started running at me. Whoa. 48-year-old said as he pedaled away, the zebra slipped and fell, allowing him to make his escape. Ah, dumb zebra. Poor zebra. (laughs) Stupid zebra. According to Newshawk, there have been numerous zebra sightings in recent weeks. Several local residents have said the zebra is named Maynard and lives at a local ranch. Well, that's good stuff, Maynard. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I don't Maynard's, uh, those folks go grab and bring them back home. Well, I know what the problem is What's the problem? The zebra, um, is loose. It, uh, it, it was owned by Ray Liotta. <laughs> no, hang on a second. What, I, what did you have the, the, the intro to the uh, What Were You Thinking <laughs> uh, segment? Uh, uh, I didn't even get it. Josh. <laughs> It's time now for What Were You Thinking, Josh? Yes. Yeah, Jeff, you had a question? I, I don't get it. I don't get it either. Well, the man passed away, and so, of course, the zebra, free to do whatever it wants. <laughs> Why would no Ray, Ray, Liotta, why would Ray Liotta, Liotta have a zebra? zebra? He's famous for mafia movies. <laughs> well, the muff, rich and famous. Wow, <laughs> there's a, nothing well, there, man. I got, an I got to tell you that <laughs> in the Santa Barbara, I, that no, is a, a after many many home runs today. No. That is not just a swing and a miss. That's, that's a rare misstep for you. That, that, yeah, that disqualifies the yes. team. Now, this Buddy. is interesting to me. No, no one liked it. <laughs> I loved it. No, I say keep it, it up. I like all this. Well, did you love it because it failed? Yes. But or did you? I appreciate Freud. the fact. I like the tragedy behind it. The man's recently dead. Right, right. There's a legitimate zebra on the loose right now. That's sad. Why would he have owned a zebra? Why would he have owned a zebra? Let's just go along with it. Does he live in Santa Barbara? <laughs> well, he lives in Santa Barbara. Did he? 
I don't know, but it seems like <laughs> something a celebrity would. I mean, o- Oprah lives there. I know that. Well, that doesn't matter. And, I, what I'm who, saying. Who, who, no, that actually. And who's that? My the, who's the super rich prince trying to save the world now? Harry. Many, prince, prince, prince Harry lives Harry. in Santa Barbara. Many he's he's with, roughing it in some money. ten billion dollar mansion in Santa Barbara. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, the, so this guy's in his bicycle. Right. He's attacked by a zebra that once belonged to Ray Liotta. <laughs> wow. I, yeah, I got a riddle for you. You know what's black and white and red all over? What? A guy who's been squashed by a zebra who's bleeding to death. <laughs> well, that sounds oh, funny. Wow, that what? wasn't clunky or, uh, <laughs> hey, to save the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe maybe the zebra had a job at athlete's foot. I, uh, oh, what, athlete's what foot. does what really mean? Right. These are all better than that joke. <laughs> that was do, you mean, do you mean foot locker? You mean foot locker? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you mean. Oh, no, athlete's foot. Why would a zebra work at athlete's foot? <laughs> sorry. Weirdo. Is that is that store called? No, it's Foot, foot Locker. Is that called there Athlete's Foot? There, no. there was a store, or is a store called Athlete's Foot? I don't oh, know really? if it's still around. You thought it was but named wow. after Sorry. a disease. The Foot Locker is the one they wear. They wear oh, the referee shirts. Yeah. Where'd shoes, you get your right? gloves? Hand and mouth disease? <laughs> Sorry. No. Oh, the Athlete's Foot was a store. Was it? Oh, really? Yes. I, I, it was a I, shoe I, store. That's yes. what I thought. I, yeah. yeah but I don't remember. So that. Where, where are the where are the folks wear the zebra shirts? Foot Locker. Sorry, never been. I only know that Ray Liotta used to shop. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't anymore. The man's dead. You're a funny guy, John. Wow, what do you mean I'm funny? just what? tuning in right now, they're going to think, what? You know, Leota, Ray Leota famously in his first audition uh, as an actor did the dance known yeah, as the, the Freddy. Oh, God, we all know. Not that again. Heard on NPR. It's true. Uh, very nice. Uh, do you know what a group of zebras is called? This is not a joke. What? Do you is know? It, a zipper? A, no, a, it's not a flock. Uh, Okay. A dazzle of zebras. Well, that's because oh, they're cool. dazzling. They're beautiful animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're kind of they're kind of yeah. chunky horses. Well, they're just horses in jail suits. They're mean. <laughs> oh, so uh, well, no, they are cool. I love zebras. You do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd stop and take a selfie with a mad zebra foaming at the mouth. I wouldn't do that. Well, but, that doesn't uh, say anything about it being mad. It's I'd a take pet. a tour of the late Ray Liotta's estate and see. <laughs> <laughs> Zebra as far as the eye can see. Oh, man, the guy. Who knew? What I, I other go, exotic animals I want to go into this break oh. so I can find out what the hell you were thinking. There had to be a germ of comedy in there. Somewhere. I think it works. It's but, great. Uh, I got the giggles. It was so fun. I didn't get it at Why all. would Ray Liotta have had a Jeep? I mean, a Jeep. A Jeep. We've all Sorry. lost our minds. <laughs> oh, no, as, as we know, he did have a Jeep, of course. Oh, he didn't have a Jeep. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, if you have a Jeep, Jeep, you need your parts for it. Hey, uh, yeah. Do you have any? You know something? <laughs> I have owned many a Jeep. Uh, a Grand Cherokee. Oh, those oh, are I nice. I love my Grand Cherokee. Uh, yeah. The greatest radio of any car I've ever had. Oh, um, Napa. Napa Auto Parts wants to keep that Jeep you've got moving, or, or your truck, or your car. If it's got wheels, it's got an engine. Napa wants to keep it on the road, that little uh, light lighting up there in the dash. Uh-oh. Napa can help you get that thing fixed. Uh, windshield wipers, whatever it is you need, they've got it. In fact, Napa has over 500,000 quality auto parts. So Napa's going to have what you need. Don't forget oh. they're famous for their curbside pickup or next-day delivery. When it comes to serving you and your car or your truck, Napa's motor never quits. They've got Napa know-how. Curbside pickup available at participating Napa Auto Auto parts stores within stock items only. All the details, of course, are at uh, NapaOnline.com. Our friends behind the counter, they're great. They've got Napa know-how. When we come back, we'll Al- see if we have joke know-how. <laughs> Al Jackson. And we'll have Al Jackson perhaps saving the day. Also coming up today, we're going to talk with Brian Dunkelman, friend of the show Brian, uh, kind of famous for uh, hosting the first year of American Idol. And uh, remember this? You know who we're talking about? I do, yes. Yeah. Along with Ryan Seacrest. And uh, there's now a documentary about what happened to Brian. Wow. He was uh, the guy that left. We'll okay. see. We'll see. I'm looking forward to talking to Brian. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom. 24-7. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, knuckleheads, don't forget about Bob and Tom tonight, the video webcast of highlights of today's show. Tonight, you might see some Al Jackson, maybe some Brian Dunkelman. You never know, maybe some Jeff Oske. Just tune in tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, and you'll watch Bob and Tom tonight, and by gosh, you'll enjoy it. BobandTom.com for details. Check out our Facebook page as well, or Bob and Tom's YouTube channel. You know where to find it. It's Bob and Tom tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Again, check out BobandTom.com for more details. Rolling through a Thursday with you right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. 
Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom News Update. A helicopter carrying six people has crashed in a lava field in Hawaii. The tour helicopter with a pilot and five passengers crashed Wednesday near the southernmost tip of the Big Island. The site was inaccessible by vehicle, so the Hawaii Fire Department sent two helicopters to take victims to ambulances waiting at nearby roads. The pilot had been trapped but was later extracted and in serious stable condition. An 18-year-old woman's reported in serious condition. Four people reported as ambulatory. All have been safely evacuated from the site. Scorching temperatures are in store for the southwestern U.S. over the next several days. Cities like Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Palm Springs are expected to top 110 degrees. Heat is part of the normal routine of summertime in the desert. But weather forecasters say that doesn't mean people should feel at ease. Excessive heat, of course, causes more deaths than the U.S. than any other weather-related disaster. And from toilet paper to yogurt to corn chips, manufacturers are quietly shrinking package sizes without lowering prices. That's right. You're not imagining it. It's dubbed shrinkflation, and it's accelerating worldwide. For example, here in the U.S., a small box of Kleenex now has 60 tissues. A few months ago, it had 65. Over in the U.K., Nestle has slimmed down coffee tins from 100 grams to 90 grams. Shrinkflation isn't new as companies grapple with rising costs for ingredients, packaging, labor, and transportation. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. And I'm not stupid. I know there's more to life than just sex. It's just none of those other things feel as good as sex. I mean, I love cookies. Oh, yeah. But if I do not have access to cookies, I will not rent a movie and watch two other people eat cookies. <laughs> Perfect stranger. Uh -huh. <laughs> eating cookies. No. Nothing. No. Uh -huh. How do you not think about sex? Everything on TV, sex, you know, all the commercials, very beautiful women in all the commercials now. It doesn't even matter what the product is. It's just very sexual. Mm -hmm. And then you finally have sex, and it's, it's kind of disappointing. Mm -hmm. Where's my Sprite, my new car? <laughs> That's why I think women should have shelves next to their bed filled with prizes, depending oh. on how well you did. You know mm -hmm. what I That's mean? That's a good idea. Like they do at the carnival. Uh -huh. <laughs> sure. That's they great. have something to shoot for, you know. <laughs> Are you going to take anything on <laughs> Right. I'm going to go for the Van Halen mirror tonight. <laughs> Bob and Tom. Well-meaning, but... Yeah, they're, they're all messed up. More than slightly confused. Brigham All Broadcasting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. The year was 1896. Uh -oh. The place just outside of Athens, near the town of Stacton Topless, Greece, <laughs> while preparing for the first modern Olympics, organizers were forced to eliminate a track and field event. <laughs> in what will surely go down as the biggest bloodbath in Olympic history. Oh. Runners from five teams were injured at the initial time trials of the 100-meter razor hurdles. <laughs> Four of the five athletes would never mm. compete again. Oh. However, Austrian hurdler Klaus Kleinendorfer went on to be a silver medalist for the women's team as Gretchen Kleinendorfer. Oh, thank you very much for this. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, <coughs> thank you for this medal. This has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Sound like Paul Hom at the end. Sunshine. Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. 24 7. On November 15th, 1864, Major General William Tecumseh Sherman began his famous march to the sea. Sherman led his troops from Atlanta, Georgia, to the ocean port of Savannah. As he was leaving, Sherman set the city on fire, gutting 40% of it. Atlanta wouldn't be burned this badly again until they gave their franchise tag to Michael Vick. <laughs> Comedian Diana Jordan is here with us. Now, can I ask you something? Yeah. Since you've been here last, have you had any augmentation of any kind? No. Okay. Must what, be. Oh, I'm wearing the Wonder Bra. Is that... Are you kidding? I, yeah. No. 
<laughs> I just showed it. Impressive. Yeah. But they call it the Wonder Bra because when you take it off, the guy wonders where in the hell you're <laughs> <off>. <laughs> Hi, this is Bob and Tom, 24-7. My name is Jim Gaffigan. I have to go and, well, I just had a... Hey, it's the Bob and Tom Show. Josh Arnold here with home run after home run this oh, morning. Oh, boy, yeah. Not one... Uh, and pulled from the game. I don't know about that. There'd be no reason to do that. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. Pat Godwin in the performance room with a very special request coming up. Yes, looking forward to it. I think we'll entail uh, more instruments and more singers or something. Are Jeff you, Oskey. Are you guys ready for the request? We will be ready. And We've got great. a guest. So then you're not ready now. But I'm going to get... We're not planning to was, do it it's now. It's called a tease. Yes. Are you yeah. the, guy, the guy in the pajamas? No, just a second. Jeff Oskey, good ah. to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Ace Cosby. We'll have to ask him if he has a zebra. We may have to. Willie Griswold and Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Oh, I, oh, oh, there's Al. I can see him now. Al Jackson. Al Jackson He's wearing a nice us. palm tree desert type shirt. That's what are you cool shirt. talking about? They, they look, look like, like pajamas. They, yeah. they look kind of like These pajamas. are like they had never. Yeah, these are just little palm trees. Yeah, What's up? Very nice. <laughs> hey, Al. Uh, I Thank like you. your. Hello, guys. Hi. Hi, Those are some big glasses. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I just got them yesterday, and I'm not sure if I'm on board with them yet. They look good. I'm just going to let them sit on my face. And I like when I buy things, Tom, that, that cause a reaction with people. So I'm just going to be in people's faces with these huge glasses. Do it. Yeah. See how they react. Who's the guy that wore the weird weird pants that... Uh, Urkel? Urkel. Say yeah, Urkel. They, they've got kind no, of an Urkel MC look. Hammer, I thought. Oh, no. Uh, oh. <laughs> the, the, the Elvis would say those are big. <laughs> <laughs> the king. <laughs> Al Jackson, comedian. Al is also... What's going on? Uh, Tom, I just want to give a shout out to oh. Josh. Uh, <laughs> I think you did a good job setting up the top of the show. Uh, I feel like they were over-talking you, Josh. I yeah. feel like they were... Jumping in on some parts. Now, granted, you were leaving some pregnant pauses there, but you know what? That's to build anticipation. So I feel like Josh, you did a great job. I know way more. I, I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm I'm misunderstood, Al. It's, uh, it's yeah. it, but it's okay. We were trying to rescue him, Al, but because in the previous <laughs> in the previous segment, uh, he. Uh, it went off. Would you would you like me to deliver the joke exactly as it was to see okay. if Al gets okay. it? No, you got to get context. All right, Al. Al, Santa Barbara, California, super ritzy, famous yeah. place, and there's a loose zebra there. That's right. And now Marco Chavez unexpectedly encountered the animal on his bike ride. He said, "As soon as I rolled up, the zebra saw me and started running at me." The 48 year old said he pedaled away. The zebra slipped and fell, allowing him to escape. Apparently, there have been numerous zebra sightings in recent weeks. Some local residents said the zebra is named Maynard and lives at a local ranch. So there have been a, there's been a loose zebra in Santa Barbara for the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that zebra belonged to Ray Liotta. <laughs> See, See? There's, there's nothing there. <laughs> nothing there. I mean, the, the, sad, the sad death of Ray Liotta. So the joke is, to do with a zebra. <laughs> the joke is the man died, and therefore the zebra is now just free to do whatever. It's not like Michael Jackson where he had yeah, like zebras knew. and monkeys. Well, and... I, I give you the fact that you have to buy into the idea that Ray Liotta owned a zebra. Why yes. would Mr. Liotta well, have owned a zebra? Has, well, why wouldn't he? He has Chantix money. He's going right. to buy whatever he wants to buy. Oh, but, he did have Chantix money. We finally, he, he finally quit smoking. You see, it all works. Oh. See, it, it works. No. I, he quit about two weeks ago. I don't. I don't know about you. I just, you know, as I, I as I'm, uh, uh, you know, approaching halftime of my life. You know, 44 over here. I look at like when people like Ray Liotta, incredible career. I it, like iconic. Most people that watch his films know every word of them. And you die on set in the Dominican Republic in your sleep. Like, hey, look, we all gotta go. That's not the worst way. No, nope, I'm just right. saying. Shout out to Ray. I mean, it, yeah. for all the ways, that's not the worst way. So he probably looked at a great sunset the night before. Hopefully, he chewed some Chantix, had some nice, uh, you know, Dominican <laughs> rum. Is Chantix gum? And just drifted off into the next next uh, transition. I, I'm here for it, Ray. Okay. And by the way, have you ever seen the movie called Something Wild? If you, if you no. haven't, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Right. Jeff Daniels. And Melanie Griffith. Melanie Griffith, Ray Liotta. It's the same guy that made uh, Silence of the Lambs. Yes, yeah, Jonathan Demme. That is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Ray well, Liotta. What's it about? He, um, Two hours. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of a chance encounter with a couple people, and they end up at this weird reunion. It's a brilliant movie. I it's the, I, the first time I saw it, 
I, I went to see it twice in a row. It was just, it's that good. And that's, I love well, it. That was Ray Liotta's break. You hadn't finished uh, during the Melanie Griffith scenes uh, the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that. That's something else. <sighs> now, I think he did, and that's why he fell asleep and then just woke up in the <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yeah, by the way, that's all true. Uh, (laughs) But the the, oh god, what's that movie? There's a movie called Night Moves, not the Bob Seger song that she's in when she's very young. It's also (laughs) and Sherry 2000. That's another. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, there were those weird. There was this weird period in the mid to late 90s where we were kind of baby stepping the population towards getting used to having porn all around us. So like, there was those weird. Shows that were kind of sexual in nature, but they weren't like. Remember, like on Showtime, there would be like a Manuel and it yes, yes. or the Red Shoe Diaries. Diaries. Yeah. yeah, it was oh, like yeah. porn, but you had to wait a hundred and forty <laughs> minutes in between yeah. any scene. Or even Just USA would have on silk. a train. It's like, got it, bro. <laughs> remember Silk Stockings? stockings. On? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Al, I have a question. You guys, um, it's for ladies too. We like a story in sure, sure. the romance. Do, do you think? Do you think there's someone out there who uh, it, now they have what do you call it? A compulsion. They can only get off watching porn that's kind of been scrambled, and every once in a while you see a <laughs> <laughs> like a little it's boob a shot demo. Because <laughs> certain channels they used to scramble it, you'd have to buy it to get. I know. The, I know when I hear a modem dialing up, I, things twitch. Do they? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, you, you know, I, I there's, think that there's different levels, Tom. I think that, like, in terms of, there, <laughs> yes, there might be, like, a niche population of people that have issues with the scrambling, but I guarantee you everyone probably has, like, a, a, like a, a camera, a film quality that they would like to see. Because I know for me, as an older guy, I don't want to see stuff in 4 and 5K. That's too much for me, you know? <laughs> I like the way it looked and, like, so I need, like, a nice little... If it was a wine, like, I need, like, a 2008. Is there... <laughs> I'm sure, are there you know, are I there, can't are there have porno the sites that have, like... It's too much. It's too detailed. I don't I like it. it. Are there porno sites that have, like, 60s porn yeah, or 50s, there are, there are 50s porn? Porn tube sites you can go to that have the vintage porn. Sure. Now, is there a digital one of contemporary porno where you can put a, flick a switch and it goes to black and white? White. Prom- well, I don't know about that, <laughs> but I mean, change it to bad, uh, the, that classic porno music. Yeah, I don't know. The wah wah guitar. <laughs> uh, but I, I think, Al, there's ha- there has to be guys that are addicted to it, has to be on VHS and the whole routine of getting out the old VHS thing and <laughs> sticking it in the slot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, the, the, the tape, I mean. Well. Tom, uh, I told you I lived next to a famous porn star when I was in L.A., right? Oh, yeah. 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 Wasn't it Adra Fox? Yeah. Yeah. T- yeah. And it was like, I, I, I think about just looking at the, because I remember, I, t- I think I told you, my ex-wife used to think that she was a drug dealer because <laughs> she would have so much, like every day she would have like flat screen TVs leaned up against their door and like, st- you could tell expensive gifts. And I was like, no, that was like, she was like the... At the beginning of OnlyFans, she was ah. like a, um, the wish list, which I didn't yeah. know that they have. And that's why like, it's so important, I think, as the porn star to get your, to, <laughs> to grab your base, <laughs> yes. no pun intended. Because once you do, like, they're with you for life. Like, whatever you put out, whatever you, like, it's it's a very interesting fan base. But I mean, you guys saw the Catch Me Outside girl. Mm-hmm. Like, she cleaned up, like, I think she bought a house for, like, in cash for like fifteen million, and she yeah. made a million dollars on OnlyFans in an hour. God. And I helped. Oh, did you? <laughs> did you really? I, I don't know who you're, who you're talking about. I'm not clear. She on was fam- internet Phil. famous for yeah. yeah. She's on Doctor Phil. Yeah. She's rapping. She's now. still famous. The bad uh, Tom. Do you know the bad Barbie? She's the one that that got in Doctor. She didn't get in his face, but she just was talking to a guest saying the Cash Me Outside girl. Remember yeah. Cash Me Outside? How about that? No, yeah. I, I don't. Is that a song? I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. It, was, it, it was turned a into a song. Yeah. yeah, they turned it. Okay. No, I, I, I don't know. But uh, uh, our guest is Al Jackson, and uh, Al is uh, a, kind of an expert in the in the world of uh, of contemporary slang, uh, the the hip lingo. Uh, and yes. I, am, I am trying to uh, be kind of a kind of a curator of the hip, if you will, and um, uh, the hipness curator is me. So uh, let the help educate me so I can continue to pass along what is hip to the... Uh, this is embarrassing. To the crowd. This <laughs> I, I just... I mean, I don't know if that intro would have been okay on C-SPAN. No, but, no. you know, was... we're going to go ahead. Tom, 
<laughs> yes, sir. I, I, I feel good. We had a great week last week, and we're gonna keep the, we're just gonna keep the positive vibes going. So, Tom, I'm gonna ask you, uh, what is a lick? L I C K. Is this a guitar thing? That was a nice lick that he played. No, there. great, great guess though. Um, something else. Um, a lick. Uh, does the is this a slang term that are, that is descended from the guitar term? No. Okay. Is it a positive thing? It could. Yeah. Probably. Yes. Definitely. Okay. So, um, would this is this something that uh, a man would do to a woman in a, in a traditional way? N no, not necessarily. Okay. I mean, it, this is a gender neutral okay. term. Uh, so, um, could you do it to a thing? You say, man, I gave that car a lick. <laughs> no. Okay. It, it would be a way to describe a scenario that you have coming up. Oh, so I'm gonna. I'll tell you what. I'm going to that baseball game. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lick that thing. <laughs> what is, it? That sound. is it kind of like you have this it? A, this is a tough one. Does anybody have any guesses? I don't. No. It's not like the traditional. Yeah, is Jeff? Is it the traditional? Yeah, he licked it. He, meaning he he took care of it. He beat it. No, this was a term that I I definitely remember from the mid to late '90s, and people still use it. To uh, I still hear it in songs from time to time. It's not that popular of a term. And a lick is just a way that you plan to make money. So, and it's kind of usually like an easy way. So if you're like, hey, there's a car game downtown, we can go and, you know, we can go clean up. That, that's a nice little lick right there. And, the, you know, then we can take that money and flip it. Uh, we can, uh, you know, buy some used cars and sell them here. That's another lick. Like, it's just a way, it's like a money-making scheme, yeah. like for you. Go to the bus station on a Saturday night, lick a few guys. <laughs> You know, no, that's rough, not, uh, rough trade, as they call it. Tough lick. Getting closer. I mean, I would pay every single cent in my <laughs> bank account, and I would clear out my kids' college fund <laughs> just to see. I want to put a mic and a camera crew with Tom at a Greyhound station <laughs> at one o'clock on a Friday night. <laughs> oh, that's man. all I want, and I don't want a, a script. I don't want this. I just want to see what happens. I know just Tom would just like trying to not touch anything in there. <laughs> <laughs> my, my new idea, Al, I ran this by the guys earlier. Uh, you know, with all the various difficulties uh, you know, in the world of uh, contemporary air travel, I thought I uh, would dress up as a pilot and uh, uh, walk through an airport uh, carrying a large copy of a book entitled Flying for Dummies and then <laughs> sit down at one of the gates <laughs> clearly drinking an alcoholic beverage <laughs> and asking people to go by, hey, listen, I'm supposed to take off in, in gate nine. Where the hell is it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, let's uh, let's see if we can do something else that will help me with my my hipness factor. Are you familiar with the Tom, song? Let's what? do something so you can show off to the people because every once in a while you gotta you know you gotta strut a little bit. Let these listeners know. Okay. Tom knows what he's talking about. So, Tom, tell our listeners, tell our family, what's the difference between cake and cakes? Oh, I know this one. I think. Uh, okay. Cakes is a reference to the uh, gluteus maximus, right? That baby's Sir, got nice yes. cakes. Mm. And then cake is a delicious dessert. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm a fan of, uh, uh, of, of well, I like strawberry cake with, with, the, with the angel, uh, Tom, angel food Tom, cake. Tom, do you know that song, Didn't We Almost Have It All? <laughs> yeah, that's how we were with that, that answer. You were almost there. You oh. got the first cakes. What is the could be another example of cake? Like, oh, man, I'm caked up right now. Uh, uh, yeah, you have a lot of, a lot of spare cash. I'm yes, kick, up Tom. Really. That's what I'm saying. When you just you you know, you <laughs> yes. go back to your training and you see how it's a beautiful thing. You nailed it. Okay, yeah, Tom's caked up. I'm caked up. I don't have to go to the bus station. I'm caked up. I'm uh, I'm flying. I thought cake yeah. was something else. I saw. I heard that song, "Cake by the Ocean." I thought it was something else. Oh, yeah. oh what is that? You never heard the song "Cake by the Ocean." No. Is the band called who, The who's Ocean? That, who, who's that? Uh, Joe Jonas. What was the name of his band? I can't I remember. The Jonas, Jonas Brothers? The Jonas no, Brothers? No, 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 no. He had a different one. He had another band after the Jonas Brothers. and Inside Moby? Cake by the Ocean was a big <laughs> hit. I'm surprised you guys don't know that song. Okay. Yeah, it's, I don't think it, I'm allowed to listen to the Jonas Brothers. I'm too old. That's mm -hmm. creepy. Um, well, this was not a Jonas Brothers song, but it was a big hit for him. And Cake by the Ocean, I think, refers to... Um, Conalingus, that's yeah. sweet, sweet. 
Yeah. Mm. Oh. I see. Hey, Al, I don't mean to rat here, but I do have to tell you something. Uh, last week we were talking, a symphony in New York City was going to play the songs of Biggie Smalls. Oh, yeah. And my dad wanted to know if they were going to have a rapper there that would be rapping over the strings players. But the way that he asked it, he said, is there going to be a man there who will be speaking the hip-hop raps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, see, Al, I it wanted was to. a bad moment. I wanted to know if it was going to be instrumental versions of so called hip hop or rap classics. I wanted to know, because the rappers in question were deceased, I wanted to know if they were going to have, if these were like cover bands or if there would be someone rapping the hip hop lyrics. Okay, here's what we need right now <laughs> is we need to record Tom making a call on speakerphone. Just asking that exact question, whoever picks up that phone about that event. <laughs> I want you to use that. Is there going to be a man speaking the rap lyrics before I fly up to New York? To see I, it, it, it would like set that. race relations back 40 years. <laughs> Uh, Al Sharpton would hold a press conference. An, if you ever look at like, uh, like a lot of black comedy shows, and then like when there's white people there, like black people, are like, hey man, we're gonna make fun of you, but look, we're happy you're there. We're like, oh man, you don't have to come down here. That's cool. Like, I, Tom, you would be beloved if you walked in there and you were like, yeah, what's up? You got a problem? I can't like Biggie. They'd be like, no, it's great. Like, yeah, so, yeah. Get so much love. You would. A lot of girls with cakes would be up on you. Jeez, I just wanted to know if there was going to be. If it, it was just, I thought it was like the Holly Ridge Strings play the Beatles. You know, no, no one's what singing the Holly Ridge Strings. <laughs> no one knows or cares. Uh, no. <laughs> when, 1953. When, when Chick and I used to do God. those. Uh, those beautiful music radio stations where they yes. play the tapes and it was all instrumentals and you know, elevator music. Yeah, elevator music. I was wondering if these were if this was gonna be an elevator music version of rap. Boy, no one's tried that, huh? No. That'd be there, great. There are well. kind of you know, there's there's subjects there, there's uh, like videos on uh YouTube where it's just old school rap beats, but they are kind of mellowed out and they it says like hip hop for studying. Yeah. And it's like not that heavy bass line, but it's kind of the melody. So it's like listening to like rap, but like in an elevator. Mm -hmm. When if you were at the Ritz, that, that'll like, be yeah, that's interesting. Thirty years that's from now, like what it sounds like. Thirty years from now, some seventy-year-old dude going. Uh, though now we have the rap stylings of uh, Biggie Smalls, uh, but first your weather, the real quiet, kind of that mellow guy. Yeah, we all had to be in the radio. I Al Jackson is visible on the TV. DBL I Daily Blast Live. Al, you're looking good, and uh, once you're done with your PJs, put on put on some regular clothes. Uh, <laughs> he said the same thing to a comedian last week. It's yes, just a he very did. Nice, he doesn't I'll know what you. nice shirts are. <laughs> 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 Uh, Tom doesn't like my palm trees. I love it. It's okay. a great Al, you're the you, best. Chrissy. You're the best. one I want to impress over there. Aww. Thanks, Al. It's great talking to you. We'll see you soon. Hey, love you. Uh, right now, if even if you're not wearing pajamas like Al, you want to get a great night's sleep, right? Yes, you do. Uh, what's your sleep number setting, Christy Lee? Uh, 45. That is a soft mattress, Josh. 65. A little bit more crisp. Uh, Chick McGee, if he were here, he'd be talking about his 100. That's his sleep number setting. What does that mean? Well, 100 is a firm mattress. At the touch of a button, he could make it a 45, or he could make the other side of the bed a 45. That's the beauty of this. There's two different numbers, and you can have the bed the exact way that you want it. A lot of tips on sleeping are out there, and the sleep number folks have one for you. Why not choose proven quality sleep? It's a pretty simple tip, and the best way to do that is by saving a huge amount of money. In fact, 50% savings available right now on the famous Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed. Get the details by going to sleepnumber.com slash BT Show. Sleep Number stores are all around, and you can find one, and then you can go find the perfect bed for you and for your partner over there. Subject to credit approval, of course, this 50% uh, savings minimum monthly payments are required. Get the details once again at Sleep number dot com that's sleep number dot com i do love my sleep number bed when we come back we have a uh, velveta cheese in the news in a very surprising way as well as kfc and a bear this is the bob and tom show become a bob and tom vip and get your bob and tom fix 24 7 get all the info in the vip area at bob and tom dot com this is the bob and tom show
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. So, Nick, let's start with the basics. Are you a uh, married guy? No, I got just uh, got divorced. Sorry to hear about that. It's okay. Lots of people get divorced. Um, Einstein got divorced. He did? Hey. Yeah, did you know that? Albert Einstein, arguably the most intelligent man who ever lived, got divorced. They should tell you that before you get married. <laughs> It shouldn't be, do you love her? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with her? It should be, do you think you're smarter than Einstein? Oh, so you're dating then? Uh, I guess. You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to say I love you anymore. I hate that first I love you. That's the worst. The first time you ever tell a woman you love her. If they like you, they want to hear it. And when they hear it that first time, something comes over them. You know, their eyes get all wide. and Get that diabolical grin on their face. You can almost feel them saying... Excellent. <laughs> hey, guy, it's Kid Tarmac. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Kid Tarmac. Hey, don't forget, coming up this weekend, Lexington, Kentucky, I'm talking to you. Jeff Oskey, Willie Griswold, David Brooks, all appearing live comedy at the Pivot Brewing Company. Again, right there in Lexington, Kentucky. Coming up Saturday night, June 18th. Mark your calendar to find a little Willie Griswold, a little Jeff Oskey, and a little David Brooks doing some live comedy. Laughs and brew, I'll take that. Again, the Pivot Brewing Company in Lexington, Kentucky on Saturday, June 18th. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7 on a Thursday. Al Jackson with us. And coming up, comedian Brian Dunkelman with a brand new documentary out on Amazon Prime Video. Dunkelman. We'll find out all about it coming up right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with your Bob and Tom Sports Headlines. Jalen Brown scored 27 points, Jason Tatum 26. The Boston Celtics beat back another third-quarter onslaught by the Golden State Warriors, a 116-100 victory, which gives them a 2-1 lead in the NBA Finals. Marcus Smart added 24 points. In baseball, Aaron Nola pitched eight sharp innings, and the surging Phillies hit four home runs to route the scuffling Milwaukee Brewers 10 to nothing. Tony Gosselin improved to 7-0, tossing three-hit ball over six innings. Will Smith and Cody Bellinger homered early to lead the L.A. Dodgers to a 4-1 victory over the Chicago White Sox in interleague action. Byron Buxted and Ryan Jeffers each hit home runs in the fifth inning off Nestor Cortez to send the New York left-hander to an early exit. The Minnesota Twins cruised to an 8-1 victory that stopped the Yankees' seven-game winning streak. In San Diego, Jake Cronenworth homer doubled, singled, and had five RBI. Sean Manaya pitched seven strong innings to beat former teammate Chris Bassett in the San Diego Padres' 13-2 route of the New York Mets on Wednesday night. Elsewhere in baseball and in interleague play, the Cubs at Baltimore was postponed. Detroit got by Pittsburgh 3-1. Atlanta beat Oakland 13-2. Tampa Bay over St. Louis 11-3. In the AL, Kansas City, Cleveland, Seattle, and Boston all win in the National League. Cincinnati blanks Cincinnati 7-0. Miami over Washington 2-1. And San Francisco got by Colorado 2-1 as well. That's a look at your sports headlines. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Do you know a dad who's a big Bob and Tom fan? Well, get him a Father's Day gift he'll open every day. A membership to Bob and Tom VIP. The link to get it is right at the top of our website, bobandtom.com. Hey, this is comedian Ron White, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Uh, Rick Schrader is our guest. Rick is a uh, is a newly married new dad. Yes, I have a four year old daughter now, which is she's a doll. Her name's Maya, and she's beautiful. But I'll, you know, I'll tell you, she's fallen under the sway of the evil purple one. That, uh, uh, you uh -oh. mean? Uh, yes, Barney. That's Barney the dinosaur. Every morning, I love you. <laughs> you know, I he make, you know, I haven't digested a breakfast in a year for listening to uh, Barney on the. Uh, and those amazing robot Stepford like children they have surrounding him and the realistic portrayals of kids. Now, hey Barney, let's clean our room and then pray. You know, just, <laughs> <laughs> where do they get these kids. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Off the Mouseketeers directly to Barney and you know, 
It's amazing. If you know, you have a, the kids love Barney. Mm-hmm. They oh, love yeah. him. Oh, yeah. they, you know, it's, you know that's going to be the next Waco type disaster. Uh, <laughs> Barney and his followers in a Quonset hut outside Dallas. You know, <laughs> sharing means caring, Billy. So strike the match. <laughs> <laughs> you know, next thing you know, uh, polyurethane Barney suit goes up like Tinder. <laughs> I point this out because I care. <laughs> Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life. And I worked the state fair. We were stupid before stupid was cool. I actually uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Well, check out. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety first. You don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Website. Hey, it's the Bob and Tom Show. Thank you for joining us. Having a great time. Why? Because Christy Lee is here. Oh, thanks, Josh. Giving us the news. Pat Godwin with a very special number coming up. Hi, Josh. Jeff Oske sitting in for Mr. Chick McGee. Yes. Chick doing uh, quite well after his gallbladder procedure. Ace Cosby. Looks like we're having some technical difficulties. Uh, guitar's not coming on. Or... Oh, well, I Is don't, correct? we don't, uh, as per usual with Ace, we don't know if that's a joke or uh, actual information trying to be disseminated. <laughs> Much like uh, your uh, zebra. Uh, hey, line, look, I, I've gotten... Earlier. Two emails in my defense. Willie Griswold. Really? <laughs> Two. It, I, I don't think you understand why it was so brilliant. It, <laughs> it was you. completely unnecessary. It's like Mulholland Drive. You have to just understand that it's brilliant, not really try to figure it out. Yes. <laughs> okay. You're talking about the movie? That's right. Um, All right. Uh, another why don't you just sit there ignorantly, Christine? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, uh, that, 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 that introduction went south quick. Well, that's because um, you were interrupted. Tom Griswold's over thank, there. Thank you very much. And I think the interruption uh, was just fine. Uh, do you want to give me a test on that guitar, Dean? Is there some issue? Not at all. Who knows? Wow, what? rock and roll. Okay. Oh. Just trying to save us. Before we get to that song, though, we have <laughs> a very important sports update. Yeah. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on a second. Um, uh, By the time you find it, we'll all be- there we go. Sports update. You guys all know who uh, Cooper Cup is. Yeah. No. A fine uh, wide receiver. In the, the Rams. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. Also the inventor of the Pooper Cup. <laughs> sort of a alternative <laughs> to diapers. Yeah, anyway. they, they tried that for the ladies. Yeah? You Christy know, Cooper. The, the cup instead of the, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. The yeah, Diva yeah. Cup, sure. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Cooper Cup, he arguably had the greatest season of any wide receiver. What? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you argue that? Yeah. Uh, and okay. he's cashing in. That's right. Cup and the Rams have agreed to terms on a three-year, $80 million extension reported by ESPN. So he's got by. cake. He sure yeah, he does. does have right. cake. He's yes. in his bag, yeah. Yep. He's set to make $110 million over the next five seasons. Good for him. Yes, it's a massive contract. Yeah. So. <laughs> I can Good catch stuff. I deserve $100 million. I know, right? Oh, I, and this isn't a joke. I had a buddy that I did open mics with did open mics with who played with him at Eastern Washington University. So I'm sure for my buddy Blair that's doing open mics in Austin, <laughs> this is incredible that his boy's getting a hundred million dollars. <laughs> okay. Ooh, wow, awesome. congratulations to him. Man. That has been a sports update. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, I'm sorry. You're very you well. wanted to That was a sports update. Thank you very much. I got this I got a letter about your joke, John. Oh yeah? The person really enjoyed it? (laughs) Dear Bob and Tom, Mm -hmm. what's black and white makes no sense at all. Oh, what's that? Ray Liotta zebra jokes. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) So they didn't didn't really get Uh, it. Dear Bob and Tom show. Yes. Josh's Ray Liotta zebra joke makes turducken look funny. Oh. Oh. Well, that one stung. (laughs) Going back to the classic. Once again, uh, your joke, uh, you suggested that the loose... Zebra in Santa Barbara must have belonged to the late, great Ray Liotta. That's right, because now the moose is loose and uh, 
can do whatever it's it wants. It's not a moose, it's a zebra. That's it. Moose is Well, no wonder the joke story. didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> this whole time I've had a moose in my head. Now, uh, Josh, you're taking a couple days off. You're going to Lake of the Ozarks. Yes, do you going blame fish, me? Going no, fishing with I one don't. of your brothers. <laughs> Going fishing with one of your brothers, and uh, you made the mistake of telling a true story on the air a couple of years ago. As I often do. Yeah. Um, this particular <laughs> story involved um, uh, nature calling while you were uh, you were fishing. Yeah. And your brothers didn't want to go back to the cabin, so they had you house uh, very nice lake house. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the back to the lake house. <laughs> they, they so you uh, somehow got into the water. Somehow. Somehow. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> he was lowered down by a crane. That's right. And the tide assume, managed to not change. I mean, I mean, you didn't, like, cannonball off uh, the bow, Half a you? dozen pterodactyls <laughs> flew out and <laughs> lifted him from the vessel, <laughs> which then stopped sinking, of course. And so, you, But you immersed yourself in the lake, and you proceeded to uh, defecate. Yeah. Uh, rather than uh, go into shore to use a toilet facility. Right, they and, wouldn't take me. And this song emerged from that, um, and by request, uh, and, and Pat, would you care to play it for us? Sure. Odin. Sitting in a passport. Chilly lake. <laughs> <laughs> Folks are having a shore lunch. Oh. Parents hide their kids' eyes. Oh. Anglers quickly flee to the other side, side, side. <laughs> now it's running down his leg. Oh. Oh. Aqua dump. <laughs> Aqua dump. Oh, yes. Um, Not one of my prouder moments. Uh, but, uh, but Jethro Tull celebrating more than 50 years of that great original. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Pat. Yes, thanks. Thank you, what Dean, did you, on the guitar. What did you wipe with? Nothing. It's sort of, uh, you're in the leg, it sort of wipes itself. Oh, okay. Does it, uh, though? The it's big bidet? Big... <laughs> Yeah. Lake yeah. Bidet. <laughs> you have to wonder. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Somewhere in France. Name a, uh, name, name a trailer park. Lake Bidet. <laughs> see, if, see if people were. Well, I, I got a really good deal. I'm moving over to Lake Bidet. It's not a real big lake. It's more of a pond. <laughs> There's a big no swimming sign. I don't know why. A lot of flies. <laughs> uh, we, we'll come back with something else. Well, Christy, yes, you want to give me will. the teaser, please? Well, we have Velveeta in the news. We have KFC in the news not together. We have an incredible couch that was bought on Craigslist and a fed up Massachusetts gas station owner is not going to sell gas anymore. He's and fake urine in the news. Oh, yes. Fascinating. From the Wolverine State when we come back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules. This is the Bob and Tom Show.
we got some extra from the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Greg Warren, former uh, state champion wrestler. You're the son of a wrestling coach. Now, I assume your dad was also your wrestling coach. Is yes. that correct? Yes, he was. He was a high school wrestling coach. So I wrestled, and my mom was into music, so I played the clarinet in the band, uh -huh. which uh, they made fun of me, especially the guys on the wrestling team, especially sure. my best friend, Huey Baker. He was, uh, he was a black guy. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys that would just get a hold of something and never shut up. <laughs> and like, Look at Greg, man. Greg played a flute. <laughs> so, it's a clarinet. You, it's a flute, Greg. You a flute man. <laughs> Look at little flute man, Greg. Flute your flute, Greg. Little flute man, Greg. He'll be on the bus going to a match. He'll be real quiet, and all of a sudden you hear, Hop, two, three, four. What the hell are we fighting for? Flute man. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing when you're out there wrestling and you hear, Hit him with your flute, Greg. <laughs> Hello, this is comedian John Evans. Padoom, 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 and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Ah, yes, the High Plains thrifter is what he goes by, and he has a YouTube channel. If you enjoy that type of lifestyle, you know, going to flea markets, buying things, flipping them, making more money, John Evans is your man. Look him up on YouTube. He's got all sorts of insights and in how to do it, why to do it, what to do, and how he does it. It's a lot of fun if you're into that kind of thing, and he's uh, made quite a nice little side gig off of being the high plains thrifter and hitting all of those flea markets that's comedian john evans he's been here before he'll be here again and you never know who's gonna stop by brian dunkelman gonna stop by here in the nine o'clock hour that's right he's got a brand new documentary out on amazon prime called dunkelman covering his life story from hosting american idol with ryan seacrest in season one to being an Uber driver, he has done it all. And Brian Dunkelman joins us coming up right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News Update. The widow of Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins is making her first public statement since his death as the band has announced two concerts in his memory. Allison Hawkins thanked fans for the outpouring of love after his death in March. Meanwhile, the Foo Fighters are planning to hold tribute concerts September 3rd in London and September 27th outside Los Angeles. The lineups will be announced later. Most of the audio history of the band Blondie has been sitting in guitarist Chris Stein's barn in Woodstock, New York, for nearly two decades. They sorted through 100 reel-to-reel -reel tapes, half a dozen cassettes and various stuff that included dressing room signs and an Andy Warhol print to create the upcoming Blondie boxed set Against the Odds, 1974 to 1982. 36 of the 124 tracks have never been released before. It will come out on August 26th. The Jennifer Lopez documentary Halftime kicked off the 21st Tribeca Festival yesterday, launching the annual New York event with an intimate behind-the-scenes portrait of the singer-actor filmed during the tumultuous year she turned 50, co-headlined the Super Bowl and narrowly missed out as an Oscar nomination. A star-studded and musical premiere at the United Palace in Washington Heights served as an appropriate opener for the Tribeca Festival. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Don't know what to give a certain dad for Father's Day? Well, how about a gift he'll open every day? A membership to Bob and Tom VIP. The link to get it is right at the top of our website, bobandtom.com. Hi, this is Greg Warren, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Well, let's get a serious tip from you. What, when you get pulled over for a traffic thing, what's your suggestion? What do you do? Just be polite. Yep. Yeah, I can if you, if you say yes or no, sir, da 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 da, da mm -hmm. I, more than likely you're going to get off unless you just run into a jerk. And mm -hmm. You're not supposed to get out of the car, right? No. You know, the best thing to do, mm -hmm. and what I always do at night, uh, if they pull me over, I always flip on my dome light and put my hands on the thing. And they always say, oh, you've been arrested before. <laughs> <laughs> And I go, no, I'm an ex-cop. And then all of a sudden, everything just moves. Now, how, do they, how do you prove you're an ex-cop? Do you have some kind of special signal? Or I just say, I, got, I you, make more money now. Mm -hmm. And they know that you're... They know I'm the ex-cop. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm so doing that, telling them I'm an ex-cop. You don't ever say you know a cop either. Oh, really? Because then 
the, the automatic response is, yeah, I know him. I hate him. Oh. <laughs> well, they, they must know the same cop we know. <laughs> wow. That that's is all, sad. That's the automatic response. Oh, really? That's the worst thing you can say. But uh, you know, I, I got a friend that's a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a free pass. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can't pull me over. <laughs> I'm assuming I can go on with my life. Hey, I give it the police fund. Does that help if they have the bumper sticker in the car? No. 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 <laughs> That's the first thing they look for. Yeah. Sorry. Man. Every they drug dealer just in the go, world has one of those. Boy, you're a chump. <laughs> <laughs> you just paid for our last keg party. <laughs> 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 Bob and Tom 24 7. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Like every time you get the plane, they talk about the flotation seat. Like if you go down, in, if you crash in the ocean, then the seat will float. Two planes out of 100 go overseas, 98 out of 100 stay right here. So if you want to make me happy, you show me a seat that's going to bounce out of a cornfield. <laughs> that's what I like. <laughs> <This one. laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you, oh no. You're talking out your ass again. Et cetera, et cetera. Hey, welcome to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee. Hi. Slinging news this morning. Yes, Pat Godwin uh, knocking it out of the park with his music. Thank you, Josh. And his snipey, snipey jokes. Jeff Oske sitting in for Chick McGee, who's healing up nicely. That's right. And, uh... <laughs> If you didn't hear Chick had a gallbladder procedure, he's doing quite well. He'll be back in just a couple days. Ace Cosby. Yeah, with yeah. the Omaha Steaks joke of the day. Willie Griswold. Hey. Good to see you, Tom. Great to see you. Good to see you, Joshy. Josh heading to the Lake of the Ozarks, uh, the site of the famous Aqua Dump. We just heard that great song. Thank you, Dean, for the nice guitar work. And our apologies to Jethro Tolley and Anderson Eight Hall. <laughs> uh, a couple quick things. Uh, yeah, Chick's doing great. I had surgery last evening, and uh, thanks to all the great doctors and uh, staff, nurses, et cetera, et cetera, he's doing well. And uh, he should be back. He thinks he's going to be back on Monday. I've wow. had people texting and twitting. Twitting? Twitting. Yeah, that's right. That's it. <laughs> Saying they were back to work the next day. So yeah. I guess it's. Well, no yeah. rush. Take your time. No take rush at time. all, Chick. Oh, Chick we miss yeah, you. Take but... your time. Take your time. Uh, yeah. uh, we had a news <laughs> no, story. No, we want him to be. I, I have a letter about a news story, real quick. We had a um, news story last week about uh, what do they call it? Supply chain issues. Sure. In the world of movie theater popcorn. Yep. And um, this was at the CinemaCon Industry Convention, and the attendees were informed that there may be a shortage of movie popcorn containers. Mm -hmm. uh, the source of that story was the um, distinguished Wall Street Journal. Yes. And um, uh, we have this nice letter here. This comes to us from Jared. He goes, I've been listening to you guys for four years. I want to say I enjoy the show very much. You reported on the popcorn container container shortage last week. I told my wife about it, and she said, Are you hearing the bomb and time show? So it's not true. Oh, my oh, God. Okay, yeah. well, Lady? Well, we went to see the new Top Gun movie over the weekend. She ordered her small popcorn. They said, We only have the large containers. At that point, I jumped up and down, looked at her and said, I told you so. Thanks for keeping me informed on um, the dumb stuff. Uh, we appreciate that. Because that is dumb, but it's also true. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in other we words, don't tell you false stuff. Jared, so uh, we uh, win. Convenience. She loses. That the movie theater ran out of small containers before they ran out of large containers. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, yeah, you're a former movie guy. Yeah. Oh, but you're also a conspiracy guy. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they weren't charging her for the large popcorn. They were just giving her the small and the larger bucket. See, when I worked in a movie theater, we would have, we would have had to have charged her for the large because inventory was yeah. gone yes. well, I'm by sure counting the containers. They probably informed them. that. Uh, I would hope so. Yes. Um, again, what we're trying to underscore is the fact that this is the source of truth. And, Josh, would you? what would you say the ratio of people ordering? I Wouldn't you say most people get a large as opposed to a small? Yes. Like Yeah, we sold more larges one. than we sold at smalls. No, right. did you get all the popcorn you wanted? Yeah. Was that part of the gig? Did you get sick of eating popcorn? I, no, no, I didn't get sick of it. But um, I also didn't eat a ton of it. While I mean, I didn't really eat a ton while I was working. But the fun part was being able to go see a movie for free and then bringing in your own container and uh, getting free popcorn and soda. Ah. Like your own container from home? Yeah. Or um, 
they had, we had what they what were they called? Courtesy bags is what we called them uh, at that movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> Courtesy bags <laughs> sounds like like hookers during World War One. <laughs> Before we send them to Dunkirk. Send them for the courtesy bag. I thought the, <laughs> the round heeled ladies will be going down the. Oh, sorry. I thought the courtesy bags were the free condoms they gave you at freshman orientation. <laughs> <laughs> they always had weird flavors on those, like grape and stuff. What is? Oh, that? you didn't care for those flavors? <laughs> no, I didn't, no, never, never. You can't get that taste out of your mouth, well, can you? I mean, for weeks. Maybe you're doing it right. Uh, Josh, uh, Josh, uh, a couple things here. Um, we have uh, a n- number of people commenting on. Uh, uh, Josh is swinging a miss. Well, uh, uh, regarding, what the, regarding the uh, zebra joke, I think uh, we're just so stunned because you never do that. You're always a home runner guy. The joke works. No, it um, doesn't. Oh, oh, it, oh Christy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get him. <laughs> So tell me, so tell me, Doctor Noguchi, you've never been able to revive one of the corpses. Oh my God! Uh, uh, I'll just read this as a very short. I'm your biggest fan. Um, Jock's Ray Liotta zebra joke was so bad. I wish I could hear Tom talk about Deland, Florida, to cleanse my oh man, to cleanse oh, my palate. Wow. That's about yeah. These, these are starting to hurt. Uh, <laughs> uh, so there we go. Uh, some, no, hey, look! I didn't mean to bum everybody out there. I. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Well, you have time. We can, we can, you can make a comeback. Okay, all right. Um, so, uh, uh, in, in any event, uh, some movie theaters are in fact running out of the of some of the containers for the popcorn. But uh, oh, uh, Willie, uh, you and uh, and Josh and Christy have all seen the new Top Gun movie. Said it's great. Have you seen it, Jeff? Uh, no, no, okay. not yet. Pat, have know. you seen it? No. Okay. No, no. no. Now, uh, could he? Thing. Now, Pat, your son is what? Eleven. Eleven. Mm-hmm. And could he go see that? Is that would that be suitable Jimmy? for him? Jimmy. Yeah. Josh. He knows more yeah. language yeah. than the yeah. movie. Yeah. Jimmy <laughs> has been exposed to a lot of. Yeah. Uh, oh gosh. Uh, it's been a comedy show. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think there's only one. But oh, go ahead. There's only one big one as yeah. far as words are concerned. That's what I said. There's one big. Yeah. One. I think that's. I think that's the only thing you got to worry about. I think you're all right. <laughs> the, your, your kids have heard worse in public school. And I think that's why they give. They get that rating just because of that one word. It's a PG-13, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, your your son obviously he's been in a car with you driving, so I'm sure he's yeah. spewed out a couple of laughs yeah, here. He and can there. handle an R. <laughs> Crazy he throws movie. his arms up to protect his face from hitting the windshield. Oh, that's how he does. Uh, uh, what's <laughs> <laughs> Once again this morning, Pat. Again, I I was right there to see it, inches from hitting a deer. That's uh, true. Uh, well, so uh, let's move forward here. I'm sorry, uh, Christy. We we've got a bunch of lost stuff and other things going on. What have you got there that makes you happy? <laughs> Well, this is an interesting story. I've never heard of anything quite like it. Velveeta now has something to offer besides cheese. They released a new nail polish, and it smells like... Cheese? Cheese. Ew. The brand's $15 two-pack of nail polish, which was created in collaboration with Nails, Inc., includes a bottle of red polish called Finger Food Red. Ladies, do you want your hands to smell like you've been rubbing the backs of your ears all day? (laughs) (laughs) I I thought you were going to go a different direction. Me too. (laughs) And yellow polish dubbed La Dolce Velvita Yellow. The recommended combination, making it look like Velveeta cheese is dripping from your red polished nails. Gross. Hey, gross. Is this? That is nasty. <laughs> I like the way you said that. Yeah. So, is the idea of this that your fingers will smell like cheese really? I, guess. I don't get it. Um, okay, it doesn't isn't Velveeta technically doesn't it have to be referred to as cheese food? Product. Yeah. They, they, cheese product, or something. maybe. Is that what yeah, I tell you what? Like that. It's terrific. Yeah. yeah. It makes the best yeah. mac and cheese. I don't care what yeah. you say. I'm just melting it. It's really good at melting. Yeah, yeah. it's a good grilled cheese. Yes. It's a good grilled cheese. They make cheese. A, a queso block, too. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Pat, do you have a tribute to Velveeta fingernails? I don't, but Ricky Martin's brother, Dickie Martin, does. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi, Dickie. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> that is... She... <laughs> She's into strange concoctions, painted up like a Barbada. <laughs> Makeup and neurotoxins, perfume, she's tried it all. She wants me to smell her nails now, but they look like dripping cheese. <laughs> I take a whiff of a polish, and it knocks me to my knees, <laughs> like she has a nail disease. It looks like a nacho chip, lo dolce velvita yellow. It's <laughs> like a cheesy dip that Velveeta should that smell low. <laughs> One hand's finger food red. It's nice and kind of mellow. <laughs> With the other hand, 
Mom's late night snack. La Dolce Vel Vita yellow. La Dolce Vel Vita. La Dolce Vel Vita yellow. Yes, mi es amigo. Yes. yes. Oh, I, I, yeah, I hope that was worth getting canceled. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that is just so weird. I'm trying to find a picture of this. That is, is it for people who bite their nails? No. Like, no, no, that... no, no, no. This is. You know what it is? Nail art has really come a long way. <laughs> it's good promotion for Velveeta. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Here's here's the photograph. Yeah. It's um. It, it's the red nail with what looks yeah. like cheese and on it. And Velveeta yeah. is running a uh, their own thing where uh, in every uh, log of Velveeta, you find three fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, you're going to have to help me here because I don't understand this. Okay. What? It says the yellow nail polish matches the brand new collaboration that Velveeta has with Wu-Tang Clan Crocs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Crocs. You know, Crocs that go on your feet? Yeah, what is the Wu-Tang? So the Wu-Tang Clan, Wu-Tang is, a, Clan is a, a hip-hop hip hip collective right. from Staten Island, New York. Yeah. And I imagine they partnered up with Crocs. There's a big, like, it's like a black background with a big yellow W. Yeah. That's their logo. You've probably seen it around. It's on, these, it's on the Crocs right here. It's pretty but, cool. But what does that have to do with Velveeta? I, they're doing some kind of collaboration. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I've always found the name Clan a little awkward. Okay, let's not highlight that. I guess not everybody oh. had that had that his history class. It's cool. I know it's class with a C. At least that's a plus. I thought you that's the difference. You weren't a fan of the old dirty bastard. Yeah, I have. No I'm idea. A, I am. Yeah, that's what yeah. in my in the family group chat. Your name is Old Dirty Bastard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Was there? Did they have a hit? Was there a hit that I missed? Oh yeah, they're incredibly influential. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I like it. Raw cash rules everything around me. Maybe Cream, move. get the money. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. You know any of those? I don't. Uh, I was probably being out there trying to make a living. Um, oh, my uh, God. You know, just because you're not... Well, even... you know what? Wu-Tang made a better living. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's great. Uh, helping the world. Um, one hoe at a time. No, they're no. they're kind of... No. They're different. Uh, they're really yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, you can get, ladies and gentlemen, La Dolce Velveeta Yellow yes, Nail Polish. Like. You know, it doesn't look as terrible as I thought it was going to. It so, looks... But, oh, it, I thought it looked terrible. But it is, in fact, scented. That's right. That's it says bizarre. it smells like cheese. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess if you, you know, Ugh. ladies, if you, if you itch your crotch a lot, <laughs> now you can say, no, 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 it's it's my Velveeta. Uh, well, What's you know, if you're down there digging at work. Oh, <laughs> down there digging at work. You know, as you ladies often do. Uh, hey, Mar- how, come Marcy's, how come Marcy's fingers always smell like cheese? <laughs> oh, she's down there digging at work. Yeah. <laughs> Digging around a word. <laughs> yeah, I hear, I was... By the way, I hear that uh, Oreos teaming up with uh, with a product. They're gonna. You can now have Oreo flavored nipple cream. Uh, that'll be. <laughs> hey, very, very, I, I, as a guy, that's <laughs> terrific. Where does it sound too bad? bad? Like the coolest thing. Let's in the make whole this world. happen. <laughs> <laughs> How about making uh, making something happen that's a good thing? Yeah, uh, like um, saving, saving money? money on my new antidepressant that I think I might have to start taking. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Christy Lee, are you talking about GoodRx, the free app? I am. With GoodRx, you can compare prescription prices at over 70,000 pharmacies to help you find the very best price. You can find discounts of up to 80%. You don't believe me? Ask your doctor. My doctor has a big GoodRx sign right there on the office desk as you leave. Pharmacists will tell you about it or the 24 million GoodRx users across the country. You know, last year they saved so much money on their medications and you can too it's easy and good rx could actually be your prescription copay price and if you don't have insurance well it'll work for you too it's simple it's smart and you can start saving on your prescriptions right now just check out good rx Go to GoodRx.com slash Tom. That's GoodRx.com slash Tom. GoodRx is not insurance, but can be used in place of insurance, Medicare, and Medicaid. In 2021, GoodRx users saved up to 80% on retail prescription prices. Hey, this is uh, maybe the best shortest letter we've ever received. Oh. If you enjoyed uh, our popcorn uh, segment a moment ago, don't go anywhere. Okay. This is one fine, fine letter. Uh, This is the Bob and Tom Show. 
Hey, don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this is a part. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, you want to have some laughs and help send some local kids to summer camp? How about that? A night of live comedy. Friday, June 17th, the place, the Irving Theater in Indianapolis on East Washington. Doors are going to open at 6.30. The show starts at 7.30. Get tickets now at bobandtom.com slash comedy show, hosted by Tom Griswold and our own Chick McGee, who will be free of his gallbladder for the show. He will be there. Performances by Willie Griswold, Jeff Oske, Josh Arnold, and my gosh, Pat Godwin right there with his guitar, the number one comedy album in the country, and he'll be taking the stage. It's really an all-star lineup, and you can see them all right there at the Irving Theater coming up Friday, June 17th. And again, it's all about sending the kids to summer camp. Again, tickets at bobandtom.com slash comedy show as we roll through this Thursday with you. Brian Dunkelman up next on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with Things You May Have Missed. Olympic gold medalist Simone Biles and dozens of other women who say they were sexually assaulted by Larry Nasser are seeking more than $1 billion from the FBI for failing to stop the sports doctor. No dispute, FBI agents in 2015 knew NASA accused of assaulting gymnasts, but the agents failed to act, leaving the doctor free to continue targeting young women and girls. For more than a year, individual lawsuits could follow the tort claims filed on Wednesday. Claimants include Biles, Ali Reisman, and Michaela Maroney, all Olympic gold medalists. An email seeking comment sent to the FBI. Remarks to Congress last year, FBI Director Christopher Ray acknowledged there were major mistakes. In other things you may have missed, it's now legal to cultivate and possess marijuana in Thailand, but the country still discourages smoking pot and getting high. Products containing more than a tiny amount of THC, the chemical that makes people high, still illegal in that country. The government is warning those eager to light up for fun that smoking in public could still be considered a nuisance subject to jail and fines. Thailand mainly wants to make a splash in the market for medical marijuana. It already has a well-developed medical tourism industry and its tropical climate ideal for growing cannabis. The country's public health minister plans to begin distributing one million marijuana seedlings for cultivation across the country on Friday. And that's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. I've got this new venture. It's called Say It to My Face. Oh. Pretty God. <laughs> cool. Huh. Hey, Josh, let's say someone talks smack about you on Facebook yeah. or Twitter. Sure. And the first thing you do is you call me, then I go to their house. And when they answer the door, I just yell, Say It to My Face. <laughs> and then I jack them with a blood dart right to the larynx. <laughs> And Christy, you and your ladies yes. don't got to worry either because I got you covered too. See, my friend Tasha and I are launching an all female company called Oh No You Didn't. <laughs> well, it's hard to spell it on the radio, but in print, it's badass. It's all hymenated. Hymenated? Yep. So the next time some chick, you know, calls another chick an obese whale when you post your porta potty selfie on Instagrams. Just give me and Tasha a call. She'll go to that chick's house and slap the spit out of her while screaming, Oh, no, you didn't! <laughs> For Father's Day, give Dad total access to the entire Bob and Tom library. Give Dad a membership to Bob and Tom VIP. The link to get it is right at the top of our website, bobandtom.com. Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Time now for Great Moments in NFL History. The year 1976. The place, Miami, Florida. It was Super Bowl X, and America was celebrating her bicentennial. The national anthem that year was performed by famous blind entertainer Tom Sullivan. Mm. Let's listen to this rare recording of his <laughs> pre-game performance. <laughs> oh, say can you see? <laughs> Mr. Sullivan, what? you're not on the microphone. Take three steps forward. Oh, oh okay. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> oh. By the dawn's early <laughs> Oh 
well organizers were applauded for their support of people with disabilities. Fans and critics alike agreed that a stage 12 feet off the ground was a particularly bad idea. A little help now. And this has been Great Moments in NFL History. Bob and Tom 24 7. Hey, man, it's Donnie Baker. Hey, Donnie. Hey, I heard you guys talking about that man with 13 inches of pork. Yeah, yeah. 13 and a half. It's crazy. You guys know Jamie Vickers? You know, drummer for Velvet Donger? No. no. <laughs> he was uncut, too, and he could hide just about anything. Really? Did that affect the taste, Donnie? Car- <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Bob and Tom. If you irradiate poop, it will be sterile, but it's still. Poop. You can pick your morning radio show, but you. Hey, it's the Bob and Tom show. What are you doing over there? <laughs> My uh, mic was uh, unplugged or something. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, Lord. It was weird. <laughs> Christy Lee at the news desk. Howdy. Pat Godwin in the music room. Hi, John. Jeff Oske over there at the Sparts desk. That's right. Ace Cosby at the engineering board. Hello. Willie Griswold at the Yuck Yuck station. Good morning. <laughs> you like the Yuck Yuck station? I love the Yuck Yuck station. <laughs> I tune in every morning. I'm Judge Arnold. There's Tom Griswold. Before we get to our guest, a real quick update. We had a, a really nice letter uh, from a guy who um, had heard our story about the shortage of popcorn containers at movie theaters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He told his wife, and she said, that wasn't true because you heard it in the Bob Look, and John we don't know show. that she used that She voice. doesn't talk like that. So uh, he got to the movie theater with her to see Top Gun, and guess what? 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 There was a shortage of popcorn containers. Uh-huh. So he went, I told you so. Always sure. a good thing to do. Now we have a follow-up letter. Yeah. <laughs> Got a follow-up letter from Steve. He writes, this guy got the added benefit of not only rubbing it in her face that he was right, he also got the benefit to watch the movie in total silence. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much. There he is on the big screen. We can see him. He is comedian Brian Dunkelman, who is, uh, hey, hey, Brian, it's good to see you again. And you're the uh, subject of of a documentary, Tell Me More. Oh, it's all about Dunkelman. <laughs> yeah, baby. Check your Chinese calendars. I'm pretty sure it's the year of the dunk. It's so great to, to talk to you guys again. It's been so long. Yes. Now, is is the I haven't seen it yet. Is it currently being broadcast and where? It is available on Amazon Prime Video right now. And if uh, you wanted to know a little bit about me, you're going to know more than you ever wanted to. It's basically my life story. And, uh, yeah, people are start, are enjoying it. Good. Right. Now, I, I could remember, uh, you, uh, d- did you go to high school in Ellicottville, New York? Is that, am I getting this I right? born and bred in Ellicottville, New York. Going back there, I, you know, I'm going back there in July. I got a big gig headlining uh, my mother's memorial. So I'm oh. uh, getting ready for that. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. You know, I it's tried to get booked to be... at that. <laughs> hey, you know, that is how hard it is to get stage time post-pandemic in L.A. I'm doing at least 30 or 40 minutes. <laughs> Who's going to give me the light? I'm still a star there. <laughs> I, I, Mom would want me to go over my time. Is what uh, I remember Ellicottville, New York, because there's a nice little ski resort there. We yes, used there to go is. to Holiday Valley. And do you remember this? Well, maybe I don't know if this is a universal <laughs> thing in Ellicottville, but um, the the uh, the plugs of bats, baseball bats, they used to make them there. And so, That's right. so you could so for firewood at the cabin you'd rent, there'd be these stacks of was it ash? Or, uh, Typically, I, I do believe I do believe it's Ashwood. Yes. Yeah. So um, you're referring to the luggy, the, the Louisville Slugger. Yeah. So plug uh, of the bats and I, I, and Brian Dunkelman. I've been referred to a, a plug as a different kind, but that's not important. <laughs> those are the, the two biggest exports of Ellicottville, right there. Yeah. And you can probably use some of those to cremate your mom. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. We're just gonna put her on a raft. That's set her right out. Viking style. Well, Do it again, cheese style. It. You know, with friends like these, Brian. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Brian, um, tell us about the documentary and what is the exact title, Brian Dunkelman, or? It's just called Dunkelman. It's real easy. You know what happened is when this pandemic hit, I started doing a YouTube channel with my son, who's now nine. He was seven at the time, just playing video games. Well, I put them up on YouTube and they were getting some of them like 12 or 15 views. 
one of the guys viewing it was this director producer who had had a notebook with a list of movie ideas and one just said Dunkelman. And he took a deep dive during the pandemic and we got together and uh, during the lockdown really, and we rented a little theater. So it's basically just me uh, talking straight into the camera with no audience. So all those years on the road have really prepared me for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was right at home. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, I guess, key features of this movie will be the story of you and American Idol. Yes. A little behind. There's going to be a lot of little behind the scenes stories that people aren't aware of, but that's very, basically the bulk of it is uh, my past and how I got to LA and then, uh, and then American Idol and the, and the wonderful aftermath of that. The bottom line is that there, it's a happy story. I'm telling you, before this pandemic, I was flat broke. I was going through a horrible divorce and custody battle. I was driving an Uber and cut to now. I just did my first acting gig in seven years. I got a film on Amazon Prime and I'm in development for my own television show. So I say, let's keep it going. Four yes. more years. That's yeah. Four yeah. years. <laughs> what, now, when you were when you were driving Uber, did you ever get recognized? Once. One time I wore glasses, I had my hat pulled down, but there was a family and, you know, they were tourists. You could tell it was a long trip. And the woman was in front because the kids and the husband were in the back. And I could just feel her looking at me the whole time. And God bless her. She didn't say a word until she got out and then she ducked back and she's like, I'm so sorry. I have to ask, are you Brian Dunkelman? And I instinctively just went, oh, God, no. I have no idea why I said that. That guy? I could have just, I could have given a more realistic answer like, uh, who is that? <laughs> I have no idea who you're talking about, but that was the one time. Hmm. Oh, did you enjoy doing that? Did you I have fun? Did not, yeah. I did not hate it. I'm not going to lie to you. Just waking up in my own bed every night and uh, I made some good money and it was all right. I always know there's something to fall back on. Did you talk to people? I did. I had a lot of amazing conversations with people, some that had gone through similar experiences with me going through a divorce. And I, I really bonded with people. Of course, you know, I was like, don't speak unless spoken to. That's sure. the kind of driver I was because that's the kind of driver I want. Yeah. Right. But, uh, no, it was really just yeah. being able to do it whenever you want. And I'd have my golf clubs in the trunk. If I wanted to take a break, I'd, I'd go to a driving range, hit some balls. So it, it worked out. Yeah, I couldn't do, I couldn't be a good Uber driver. Oh, first God, of all. No. I would not, <laughs> that? I would not get anywhere and someone would get in the car and I'd go, sir, you looked in the mirror and said, this is what I'm going to wear today. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that beard, are you serious? Yeah. Stuff like that. You I'd be terrible. You everyone. Yeah, I'd be awful. I'd be mm -hmm. a terrible driver. I'd be a terrible waiter. Our guest is uh, the comedian, Brian Dunkelman, and the new, uh, the new feature is called Dunkelman on Amazon Prime. And find out the uh, the backstory of of American Idol. Let's can we just do a little bit of the story? How did you get the gig in the first place? And uh, Mr. Seacrest, did you guys audition together? What was the story there? You know what? They had seen apparently about three thousand people for this job, and then I, I had a development deal for my own sitcom for at that time, and it was two thousand. I, I had always joked, I'll get a deal for my own sitcom, and then the world will come to an end. I got my deal September seventh. 2001 oh. and then four days later it's like the world really did end but um we pitched and you know the pitches went well but they didn't buy you know a third of what they usually did but somebody remembered me and asked me to come in and i auditioned and then we tested and then i they, they put me with seacrest and literally the next day we were working we were on our way yeah. Wow. wow. And, then, and then the fun really started. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Without giving away the, the question that everyone wants to know, let me ask you this. Have you been in touch with any of the people that were on the show, as, either as a, uh, as a production person or a host or a winner? When I went back, they invited me back for the Fox finale. They tricked me. I thought the show was over. It was the fake finale. Ooh. Of course, they went on to ABC. They're going to go another 20 years. Great. <laughs> but um, no, I did. I got to, I re reconnected with Seacrest. They asked me, I opened the show. We had a really great, uh, genuine moment and kind of just buried all, buried the hatchet. And uh, it was really nice to see a lot of the old, a lot of the same people are still working on that show. Oh, that's cool. Do you still watch? Yeah, it was I never watched Tom. That's like, getting, that's, that's, like, that's like getting divorced from somebody and then hanging out with him two, three nights a week. Like, no. Good point. Although I am going camping with my ex-wife 
tomorrow. So things are, things have gotten much better in my world, Tom. We went from a, oh, a horrible, contentious divorce, and now we're there for our kid, and uh, we're not together, but the three of us do things together. It's really fun. Oh, that's good. great. If you bury her, go six feet deep. There's a reason the oh, my animals will dig her up. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm bringing a shovel. Okay. I'm bringing a shovel <laughs> okay. just in case. Our guest is uh, Brian Dunkelman. Brian is a fine stand-up comedian and uh, is also the, uh, the, the, the focus of a documentary entitled Dunkelman. Find out what happened. What happened with American Idol? The man was the host uh, for that first first season. And I th is it fair to say that the most successful winner of that show is from season one? Kelly Clarkson. Kelly. I yeah, mean, she's she's doing all right. Yeah, she's hey, doing leave all the right. hosting gigs alone. What's going on? She's got her own show. She's great. You know what? She's got this Kelly Oki. There might be some uh, legal action taken. I've been doing, I've been getting drunk and singing in my living room uh -huh. mm -hmm. since the pandemic hit. Because I was just, you know, I'm like, my room is a private room. I used to go to private room karaoke. And I've got about 80 songs on there. And it's called Dunky Oki. Oh. So it's awful suspicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to put Oki on the end of your name. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm contending that she, to she totally stole the whole thing from me. <laughs> Although I don't know if, I don't know if she's getting drunk before she sings. Wow. So my degree of difficulty. Difficulty is much higher than She hers. had a contentious divorce, too, so you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think she, I, I, I ended up winning. I, I actually uh, had to represent myself, and we almost went to trial. And I was kind of bummed out that we didn't because I was looking forward to it just for the material. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, am I a lawyer? No, but I have auditioned to play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get the part? That's not important. <laughs> I've got, before we say goodbye to Mr. Dunkelman, I've got a, a surefire way for you to make a lot of money. I'm, I'm all ears, okay. brother. What I want you to do is invent a, uh, a, a basketball goal <laughs> that is adjustable so you can lower it and call it the Slam Dunkelman. What do you think? It, the the Dunkelball. <laughs> it's, 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 it's three sh three feet shorter. It's dunkable. <laughs> Even you can do it. I like this. We yes. gotta get together. Christy's telling me it's already been done. Yeah. Oh. The gorilla people already have that. Oh, sorry, Brian. Bad the idea. Gorilla people. Hey, hey that this is not in this climate, Christy. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks, Brian. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, the show. And I out. really appreciate it. I really I miss you guys. It's been a long time, and I appreciate you having me on. Sure. We'll see you soon. Get yeah, your come butt back out over here. here. We'll play some golf. Take care, again. you guys. That was fun. I would love to play some golf. Yeah. It was Tell fun. Chick I said hello. We will we'll do. do. We'll do. How, Brian Goldbletter's about to go. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Brian Dunkelman, comedian, and uh, I don't know what happened. I'm going to have to watch the documentary. I'm really looking forward to it. To I find out. To find out. He's funny. Um, he's, he's a very, nice very, guy. very fine comedian. And, very uh, nice guy. Great golfer, too. It, but it's got to be kind of hard to wake up every day and go, wait a minute. You mean that guy's one of the richest guys in Hollywood, and I'm driving an Uber? Yeah. Yes. I well, humbling. we've all been there, have we? Yes, I'm, I'm there right now. Uh, <laughs> well, who won't it? let you drive Uber, you liar? <laughs> Oh, is there a screening process? <laughs> I was going to say, I, uh, I was about to say, I think I'd be the worst Uber driver in this bunch. Then I realized, no. No. No, I'd be second. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but be, a, I know a quite big. a few people who drive Uber because they love it. They just enjoy doing it. Retired, love to do it. You know, I think it'd be fun. My brother-in-law is one of those people. Nice. He loves it. And Josh, could you do that, do you think? Yeah, I could. Mm -hmm. What would your, would you be a talker? No, I would be exactly like uh, Brian Dunkelman said. If they I, oh, something. sure. If they spoke to me first, I would speak. But uh, I, I, I prefer my Uber drivers to be quiet. Well, you know, you can do that on the app now. You can select an Uber driver that won't talk. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would feel like such a jerk even pushing that button. Me too. I've never done that, but I was always like, Yeah, I wouldn't okay. go. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But <laughs> Put, it, they say, do you prefer a driver who, do, who won't talk to you? Oh, I like to talk to you. Well, we know you do. But. I like to sit up front. Uh, <laughs> you like to talk to people that are in line with you. Sure. You've got to stop talking to people in public. Really cool you know, they people. say people that uh, people that uh, talk to other people a lot live longer. No. Sorry, fellas. Where the hell do you read that? I heard it in the BBC this morning. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, so if you take an Uber by yourself, you sit in the front seat? I have, sure. What? That is, uh, that's, that's weird. That's very <laughs> odd. A maniac's behavior. Was yeah. he typical? I, I take a lot of Ubers, like when I, we go to Disney World. Right. That's the key to the secret to Disney World is Ubering. Yeah, you figured that out. You can, uh, 
<laughs> it's the rest of the, I mean, no one else is there. No, 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 no. Hey, Most people gosh. take the bus where you stand around for an hour and a half and then <laughs> the bus comes and by the time they've offloaded everybody in the with the stuff, you're, you realize that the park's closed. <laughs> Take an Uber. Sorry. Uh, back to Christy Lee at the news desk. What have you got? Fast food giant KFC has been forced to put cabbage in its burgers in Australia as the country is struggling with a shortage of lettuce. The what do you think about that, Josh? The, the firm told customers <laughs> it is using a mixture of lettuce and cabbage after floods destroyed lettuce crops. What's the big deal? I don't get it. I don't care. Well, first off, that KFC has burgers. Yeah. 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 And, hmm. uh, yeah, that's, so they're out of lettuce. You're familiar with lettuce? Oh. I am. Yeah. It's that weird, wrinkly green sheet that you throw off of hamburgers. Uh, <laughs> sheet. Sheet. Oh. sheet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I definitely said sheet. Yeah, but, I, uh, I can see where you might have heard something. <laughs> when I make uh, fish tacos, I use cabbage instead yeah. of uh, lettuce because it gives it a crunchier uh, mouthfeel. And, uh, I, I got to tell you. I agree. That. I love cabbage. Yeah, I do yeah, too. Me too. I think that that's great. Did, is it true that in Australia they're also uh, using uh, emu? No. Oh yeah, they eat emu. <laughs> <laughs> is that is, it, is that a joke? No. No, he's making that. They up. have uh, Adelaide. This is why that woman Adelaide, Adelaide, believe Adelaide fried <laughs> emu. <laughs> AFE. AFE. A -F -E. A -F -E. <laughs> wow, I mean that's that's Ray Liotta zebra level. Yeah. I mean, that is. Oh, is that good? Would you <laughs> would, would you eat emo? Emo. Oh, emo. Yeah. Oh, that's a different emo. question. Yeah. I mean, oh no, and I would not recommend that. Emo man does hope to do that. I hope that you <laughs> digest me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, emus are just big chickens, right? That's all they are. They're small. They're small ostriches, right? Yeah, it's big chickens. That's what I said. That great commercial. I love those commercials. Emu, emu. You know, I don't know. They probably don't taste bad. Yeah. We've eaten ostrich in here. We have? Yeah. When? Uh, some guy brought in some meat. Weren't you here that day? Uh, no, I don't recall. Yeah, they brought it in. It wasn't bad. Well, how'd they cook it? Fried it up? I don't remember how they cooked it. I didn't care for it, but of course I got the neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just wanted the biggest piece, and guess what? <laughs> Yeah, obviously. Did you, <laughs> did, like a gigantic yeah. corn on the ground. Yeah. yeah, did you eat it that way or did you eat Why? it? Why? <laughs> yeah. I did not go. <laughs> like the way that I eat the flat chicken. <laughs> the I didn't thing. do it Adriana Chechik style. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm sure it's a porn. <laughs> right now, I want to switch gears here. Oh, we got God. some pretty, pretty cool stuff coming up, but I also want to mention, uh, tis the season for great food, isn't it? Oh, the summer. Mm. Uh, nice, great meal, sit in the porch, uh, have dinner. But uh, how about a great dinner from HelloFresh? It's restaurant quality food and what they do at hello fresh is they do the shopping they do the measuring they give you the directions and we're talking about beautiful meals and uh you throw them together have some fun sometimes in 10 minutes it just depends which one you're into what kind of food are you into they've got it over 50 recipes every week and you get to skip the drudgery of going to the grocery store you spending all that gas money trying to find the horseradish and what what is uh, what is a pomegranate whatever the stuff is they're making great food and and you're putting it together thanks to HelloFresh. They've got their best offer ever. Willie, tell me some of the stuff you've been working on lately. This is a new recipe, and it's something I never thought I would make at home. It's the one-pan pulled pork banh mi. Mm. That's right. You're making that delicious sandwich. You can get it at a Vietnamese spot at home. Mm. It takes a half hour with our friends at HelloFresh. Here's how you get started. they got an offer that you can't refuse, like they say. It's HelloFresh.com slash BTShow16. Why the BTShow16? That code... Get you 16 free meals and three free gifts as part of a very special package. BT Show 16, like Bob Tom Show 16. That's 16 free meals, three free gifts, just by going to HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 16. Now, you're going to love the food. It's restaurant quality. Your kids will clean the plates. And they've got every kind of food, by the way. I should have mentioned that. If you're into whatever comfort food or you want to maybe low-cal or low-carb, it's on the menu. Once again, BT Show 16 at HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 16. Food is great, and it's the food eating season, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, we're going to enlighten you as to some very important events in the world of the world. This is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Do you know a dad who's a big Bob and Tom fan? Well, get him a Father's Day gift he'll open every day. A membership to Bob and Tom VIP. The link to get it is right at the top of our website, BobandTom.com.
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, I'm Marty Gleckman for Casket Carnival. It's a Casket Carnival. You won't lose your shirt. It's a Casket Carnival. When we shovel on the dirt, we'll make sure you're really safe before we stick you in your brain. We will you. Casket Carnival. We've got lots of games and prizes, and since many of our coffins are scratch and dent or gently used models, we pass the savings on to you at Casket Carnival. And don't forget to say hello to our lovable mascot, Embalmo the Clown. Hey, yeah, there it. Thanks for coming to the Casket Carnival. You're really gonna dig our prices there. Don't forget to ask about our layaway plan, eh? Hey, geez, what's wrong with these people? I'm dying up here, huh? Uh, at the cremation station, we want to earn your business. You know, sometimes I wish I were dead. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Don't, 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 don't. The Essential Morning Radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7, 24-7. Hey, for everything Bob and Tom, check out one spot. It's our website, bobandtom.com. Have you seen the puppets yet? What are you waiting for? Head on over there and check out that Smack Tom video, as well as Willie Griswold at the infield of the Indy 500, if that's still up. Tom talking to the drivers, Ace Cosby telling jokes. There's Pat Godwin playing his guitar and making us laugh with his songs, the number one comedy album in the country. It's all available for you, and it's free. Bobandtom.com for more as we roll through this Thursday. You know we learn a lot on the Bob and Tom Show each and every day. Today, no exception. Josh Arnold will be covering what we learned today as well as a little bit of history on this June 9th with Professor Griswold. That's next right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. He's not really a professor. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom news update. A helicopter carrying six people has crashed in a lava field in Hawaii. The tour helicopter with a pilot and five passengers crashed Wednesday near the southernmost tip of the Big Island. The site was inaccessible by vehicle, so the Hawaii Fire Department sent two helicopters to take victims to ambulances waiting at nearby roads. The pilot had been trapped but was later extracted and in serious stable condition. An 18-year-old woman was reported in serious condition. Four people reported as ambulatory. All have been safely evacuated from the site. Scorching temperatures are in store for the southwestern U.S. over the next several days. Cities like Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Palm Springs are expected to top 110 degrees. Heat is part of the normal routine of summertime in the desert. But weather forecasters say that doesn't mean people should feel at ease. Excessive heat, of course, causes more deaths than the U.S. than any other weather-related disaster. And from toilet paper to yogurt to corn chips... Manufacturers are quietly shrinking package sizes without lowering prices. That's right. You're not imagining it. It's dubbed shrinkflation, and it's accelerating worldwide. For example, here in the U.S., a small box of Kleenex now has 60 tissues. A few months ago, it had 65. Over in the U.K., Nestle has slimmed down coffee tins from 100 grams to 90 grams. Shrinkflation isn't new as companies grapple with rising costs for ingredients, packaging, labor, and transportation. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom show on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. This comes to us from, uh, <laughs> from uh, David. Uh, he said, I majored in trombone in college. You can do that? Uh, sure. <laughs> What's your minor in the kazoo? <laughs> he goes, I heard this a lot. How do you get a trombone player off of the front porch? You pay him for the pizza. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Now in theaters from Bob and Tom Pictures. Hey, Christy, it's Rob. It's been a while. I was just thinking maybe we should give it another try. Call me later. Christy, Christy. Pick up. Uh, hey, how you doing, girl? It's me. I'm back in town. Man, the West Coast sucked. Oh, come on. Give me a call. Hi, Christy. Hey, it's it's me. Remember me? Um, hey, I was looking at some old pictures of, you know, that time back in back in Tuscaloosa. When, well, you know, I'm sure you remember. I'll, uh, I'll, 
Call me. From Bob and Tom Pictures, Christy Lee stars in The X Men. <laughs> hey, Christy, it's your favorite drummer. I'm in town playing for a new band called Saber. Call me. <laughs> hey, Christy, it's me, Donnie, the Baker. Hey, I was uh, cleaning out the boat and I found a pair of your. Uh, Anyways, I think they're yours. Uh, can we try it again, man? I got the motor fixed. I swear to God it works better. You ain't gonna have to row or nothing this time. Call my pager. Christy Lee's X-Men, now showing uh, every other weekend and Wednesdays, if she's not too busy. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, this is Nick Griffin, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Two. Hmm? Okay. Hey, it's the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Howdy. Pat Godwin in the music room. Hi, Josh. Jeff Oske is sitting at the sports desk. That's right. Ace Cosby running the board. Hello, friends. Willie Griswold at Josh. the Yuck Yuck Station. At the Yuck Yuck Station. I'm Josh Arnold. There's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. I want to tell you something. We were talking to Al Jackson earlier. I just saw Al's going to be at the Comedy Showcase in Ann Arbor, Michigan, coming up June 16th and 17th. Okay. Ah, next weekend. All right. Plus, we just talked with Brian Dunkelman, the new uh, Amazon Prime documentary called Dunkelman, the story of the guy that was the host with Brian Seacrest of that first year of American Idol, the Kelly Clarkson year. Uh, while I'm at it, Duke Tomato and the Power Trio Elkhart at the Rhapsody Arts and Music Festival tomorrow night, and then in Port Huron, Michigan, Saturday at Art on the River. Some great music from Duke. Right now, we, we promised we would uh, revisit this excellent, excellent... Uh, yeah, you did, uh, ...entertaining you? moment on our program Zebra earlier stuff? today. It's, uh... Bruce, that oh, yeah. sexy man with a deep voice. Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. People been robbing museums left and right. Oh. Uh -huh. Why do people rob museums? I don't why? know why. That's where the Monet is. <laughs> that was Ace Cosby. Right. Why of, uh, of all Thanks the jokes Leona. of the day are you it's, yeah are you nice celebrating that one? That one? It's I art. Love that one. It's a, a nice it's uh, art. high art. It's art. There's this uh, <laughs> Monet exhibit that's going to be coming around where they take the paintings and they kind of bring them to life. And yep. I'm hoping there's one where those, what are they, water lilies, Christy? And <laughs> yes. All of a sudden, the guy lilies. water skis by and stilts and sprays the whole crowd of oh. the artsy fartsy folks. <laughs> yeah. That's what Speaking I want to see. Speaking of uh, classy jokes, Ace, uh, yes. someone, uh, Michael, sent this in. Uh, what do you call a cow with two legs? Your mom. <laughs> oh. Boy. Oh. So is that directed at Ace? That's really uh, No, I think it was directed at me. Oh, so you, you brought up the, you your mom. Your mom. Yeah. I, see. Oh, I see. Oh, I get it. Okay, very good. Well, time now to review uh, what's happening in history on What's happening in history? Time now to review the June 9th, what happened? 6 9. Oh, well, this is an interesting one. Is it? Yeah. 1973 Secretariat wins the Triple Crown. Okay, pretty cool. This is kind of weird. Secretary was listed as number 35 in the 50 top American athletes of all time. Well, well that... Secretary is an athlete. No. Of course. Secretary yes. Is a horse. Yes, he is. Well, how would you like to be number 36? Well, I, I was beaten by a horse. Well, could they run the Kentucky Derby? No, could they, they couldn't. Could they win a triple crown? No. no. Could they <laughs> hit a curveball? I'm just saying. Well, that's... Yeah, Secretary couldn't do that. Uh, you notorious. Can't, you can't... <laughs> For On one of those curve. Fox shows, they had a, a, some uh, famous Olympian run against a horse around the track. <laughs> oh, I bet that was terrific television, Ace. You <laughs> Boy, really a, watch a lot of TV. Uh, yeah. right, let's, uh, let's celebrate some uh, famous, live your life. Fa famous birthdays. <laughs> you tried a book. Uh, We're talking cross-species races now. Um, uh, 1672, the birthday of Peter the Great. Ah. Mm. That had to be really tough on his brother. You know, uh, how'd the Great do? I'm like, yeah. I'm just not as good. Don't worry about it, Dennis the Average. Uh, okay. Randy the Fabulous. <laughs> Who gave him that name? Did he give probably, it to himself? Yeah, probably. I'm Hi, I'm Peter the Great. Okay, how about yeah. uh, Nehemiah Curtis uh, Skip James, the great blues artist? Anyone? No. No? No one's heard of him? Nope. Nope. Okay. No. Uh, Skip no. James. No, really? Seriously? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> how about skipped that, that one? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you ever do anything contemporary? Because it's you're celebrating. It's, it's today well, in history. It's, it's not today. today. It's today. 
<laughs> That'd be kind of stupid. Well, we're doing birthdays. Today in history. Today. We should do birthdays of people who are still alive. If we were like, oh, Zendaya's birthday. Nobody's ever heard of her. Yeah. That's not anything. Yeah, I'm sure. The most overrated movie of all time. <laughs> Let's talk about T-Bone Skip Richardson. Yeah. His name. Trombone <laughs> Shorty. Oh, I love Trombone Shorty. Uh, 1915, uh, the birth of the great Les Paul. Anyone know who that is? Yes, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, I even is. know about Mary Ford. Okay, they're very good. Um, Jackie Mason. Born in 1928. Um, Donald Duck, born in this date in 1934. Well, that's silly. That's not real. Drawn on this date. He wasn't born. (laughs) You don't believe in fictional characters having birthdays? Well, Well, no. Here we go. Friend of the show. He's alive. Dickie V. Dick Vitale. Never cared for you. Uh, (laughs) That's true. That's the meanest thing. He's a lovely man. No, I just like oh, saying no. whenever some, whenever Tom says friend of the show, I always like saying you never cared for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That'd be a good name for a drag queen. Dick Vitale? Dick Vitale? Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> or how about someone who uh, groomed their pubic area? Dick Vitalis. <laughs> you don't use Vitalis a, on still your still pubes. Well, that's, it's just a joke. My God, you have to stop doing that. <laughs> but if the joke doesn't make any sense. It makes sense. I, well, can you imagine if he whipped out this greasy pompadour? <laughs> oh, <baby. laughs> Time now for things we learned on today's Ooh. show. Sponsored by Napa Auto. Auto parts at Napa when it comes to serving you, our motor never quits. You know what does quit? Me. <laughs> Take a couple days. From next day delivery to getting involved with the local communities, that's Napa know how. Oh, thank you very much. Here we are. Let's see here. Chick McGee survived his separation agreement with his gallbladder. Yes, thank you. He'll goodness. be back on Monday. Ace Cosby said his neck hurts. And uh, how's it feeling now? A little better. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Jeff Oske was wearing chicks. Did chick- you get into Chick's drawer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, the drug drawer? The dilated, <laughs> the drug drawer. <laughs> Jeff Oske claims that your mom is a popular phrase going around the Oske compound these days. Unfortunately. How is it used again? Your mom, whatever the question is, the answer, what do you want for dinner? Your mom, what did you do today? Your mom, everything's your mom. Uh, That's so horrible. When they said, what would you do today, what would you say? No, I was like, what'd you do today? And they're like, your mom. And I was like, I'm the only one who's done anyone's mom here. And I've done your mom and your mom. So I'd shut I up see. and eat. I see. <laughs> Al Jackson has a huge new pair of glasses that Tom didn't care for. Nah, they, 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 look, they look like that guy in, what's that guy on the TV with the weird pants? And Urkel. Urkel. <laughs> Pat Godwin and uh, Dean Metcalf uh, serenaded us with a little aqua dump today because mm, I am going to go fishing with my older brother this uh, weekend. And, of course, the most important thing we learned, Ray Liotta had zebras. <laughs> and one of them was loose in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Okay. Now Isolate. you know. Okay. Isolate that. Yeah. We did uh, happy birthday to the great Jeff Saturday. Oh, yeah. oh Wonderful nice. Jeff Saturday. It's his birthday. And uh, Johnny Depp. Oh. He'll be celebrating with clean sheets. Uh, <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. Got a comment? Our email is Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. More Bob and Tom next. State law. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Boy, this week in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, sure has a lot of dummies in town. It's the annual ventriloquist con- 